There's no doubt that 21st century man has come a long way from our hunter-gatherer origins. Good morning, it's Ryan here calling today to book the annual service on the boiler. In Britain today, we take food, shelter and warmth for granted. Can have a cappuccino, please? And most of us consume rather than create. I want to find out what happens if you strip man of all the luxuries and the conveniences of modern living and then force them to fight for their very existence. 13 ordinary British men are about to be abandoned on the remote, uninhabited Pacific Island. With just the clothes to stand up in and a few basic tools. Spear! Yeah, spear! Spear! Keep eyes on it, keep eyes on it. It's a boa constrictor. Oh, hello, scorpion. Ah. And these guys are going to be completely alone. Just seems like it's jungle forever. Filming everything themselves. Yeah. Can I pass the camera up to you? As they struggle for fire. Me first. Oh, it is this <laughs> string. Water. Salt. No. Food. That was it. Yeah, I think he's dead. Dead man. I have no idea where the next meal's coming from. And shelter. Have British men lost the practical skills that were once passed down from father to son? Again! When pushed to the extreme, do they still have what it takes to survive? We're all losing weight, people are on the edge. I feel like I'm going to collapse, man. Tonight we feast like kings. 30 people will not leave this island. One wrong move and this place will take you down. If I can guarantee you anything, it will be life-changing for these people. <laughs> Can't believe right. this. This is dangerous, Fletch. Coming in, coming in, Grace! to say if I'm a survivor or not because I've never had to survive. It's a bit of the unknown, isn't it? I certainly don't underestimate what we're facing. I've never done anything like this in my life, have I? I'm about to abandon these men on a remote Pacific island to see if they can survive for a month. They will be utterly alone. My mother does pretty much everything for me. So I think going to the island is going to give me the opportunity to prove to myself that I can actually live, I can survive. These are ordinary guys with no previous experience of living in the wild. Oh, oh my! I think I have a massive point to prove. People might watch this and be like, oh, he's not going to survive, he's gay. So what? Watch, I'm the dark horse, I'm going to survive anything you throw at me. Here we go, boys. For the next four weeks, these men will have to survive entirely on their own wits. They have no food and only enough drinking water for the first day. OK, this is it. Yeah. We're heading in. Really, the idea behind this experiment is to find out whether modern man has lost that ability to look after themselves when they're stripped of everyday creature comfort. Without your smartphone, without your computer, can modern man still cut it? I still believe that that spirit is still there within us all. And it's not until we're kind of squeezed and put under pressure that we find that spirit, that resourcefulness, that courage again. So, OK, who was expecting a white sandy beach? Check it out, guys. What is it? It's a croc over there. Done. No way. Where is there it? Is. Where? Right over there. Where? 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 Just over there. Went under. Oh, see where the ripple is over there to the left. Okay, guys, this is end of the road. From here on in, you're totally on your own. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. It's going to be a really hard experience. Let's see what British modern man is really made of. Cheers. I suggest we get in a single file, because where are we going to go from here? Do we know the way? Exactly. So it's pointless all wandering off in different directions. The group has never met before, 
What's, what's your name? <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Come down. <laughs> they will be completely alone and have had just a day of survival training. Straight ahead, looks as if there's some land down through there. From here on in, everything you see will be filmed by the men themselves. Hey. Yeah, good to meet you. Hello, buddy. Get in single file, because if you wander off, you could drop down a gully. If you're in what, single what, file... What's your name? What's your name? My name is Tony. All right, Tony. If you get in single file, fellas, if one of you wanders off, one of you going to gully, I'll tell you. Single file. Okay. Oh, God. Wow, weird feeling suddenly just leaving them. Mainly because I know how harsh these sort of terrains can be. These islands always look amazing. If you get up close and dirty and you realise, you know what? Stinking mangrove swamp. Bloody hot. And full of one hell of a lot of nasties. It's time for me and the crew to leave. See you in four weeks. I won't be back until the end of the experiment. The men's home for the next month is a remote, uninhabited Pacific island. That's eight kilometers in circumference. I've ensured there's enough food and water here to keep them alive, but only if they have the ingenuity to find it, catch it, and kill it. The island has five beaches, but the interior is unforgiving. It's completely covered in thick jungle and mangrove swamp, which is exactly where I've dropped them off. Cheers. Do you want to take your hand? Do it. Ah, nice one. What's your name? Joe. Yeah. I'm Matt. Good Matt, to see nice to meet you, Matt. Good to see you. Three of the men are trained as cameramen, but they will be living under exactly the same conditions as everyone else. In their bags are just camera kit and medical supplies. Stick it in the medical pack. Beyond that, the men have no food, one day's water supply, and only a handful of tools. Mm. You've got three machetes. We've got two knives, one smaller knife. So we've got three knives. Three knives, three machetes. Yeah, that's it. Wow. Yeah, man. Fucking hell. <laughs> Fuck me. It's been an unexpected start. Uh, I've been fantasising for a, quite a long time now about a beautiful golden white sandy beach uh, and the boat crunching softly up on the sand. What's actually happened is that we've landed in the middle of an alien movie. Just have a look at the water. Look, see, I'm in. And it's coming up. This is coming in so quick. In this part of the Pacific, extreme tides mean these mangroves will soon be under three metres of water. Yeah, mate, this tide is coming in quick. Right, we've got we to need, get up there somehow. We need to get away from here, so it's not, it's not the ideal place. No, tide comes in where yeah. it's going to stop up there. If we, if we head, head up that way... Whoa, hang on a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, 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 wait. hang on a minute. Let's discuss it. Let's discuss it. All, all we want to do is just, just get out of here. That's yeah. what we're trying to do. Yeah. All right. You want to go up and then I'll... Yeah, we'll... we'll, we'll just... So we can get ourselves up all right here. All right, yeah, Watch your point. ankles, yeah, it's slippy. Come on, listen in, fellas. Yeah, yeah. Oh, listen in. You'll soon go over and you'll finish up with a bloody sprained ankle within an hour. It's four hours till sundown. The men now have two pressing priorities. Go on, I've got you. Get a foot on. Lovely. To look for a safe place to spend the night and then find a source of drinkable water before their supply runs out. You all right? Yeah. Yeah? Can I pass the camera up to you? Are you coming up? You ready? Yeah, I just don't want to slip. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Well done. What do you do for a living, Dean? Woo! I'm a hairdresser. I'm a hairdresser, and look what I'm doing now. Am I allowed to say that first 30 minutes was just fucking awful? Where are you Where am I from, from originally? Well, I'm from London. I was born there, but I grew up in Ghana and Zimbabwe. What about you, Ryan? Where are you from? I'm from Stockport, uh, near Manchester. Lived there all my life. Out of reach of the incoming tide, the men can catch their breath for the first time. What do you do? I trim people out to use computers. I'm an IT guy. Oh, yeah. Wow. I would never have got that. I never guessed that. Hey? Okay. Sam. No, I'm a neurologist. You're a neurologist. What's that? Brains. Like brains. Yeah? Yeah. What about you, Tony? What do you do? I was a police officer for 34 years. Wow. Wow. And I still do security work. Wow. 
So what's um, what does Ryan do? Yeah, right, and what do you do, mate? Um, I work in a call centre at the moment. Customer service. Yeah. Nothing glamorous, nothing special. Um, could you please just confirm to me the first line of the address and postcode? <laughs> I'm not where I'd like to be <laughs> at this point in time, feel, and I feel like the chances to achieve things are running low. I'd like to think that I could achieve something that's a bit tough. The only other thing that I've done that is remotely like this is going, going camping with my friends, but that's just been one night on the park, getting drunk, having a party. Other than that, nothing. Whoa! That was a close one. Almost had my kneecap then. Day one. Ah, uh, here we go. To be honest, this could be not a bad place if we had to, to camp. You know what, that's open. what I mean. This is not a bad place to start. The thing is, there could be scorpions all around this area. <laughs> Business coach Chris is convinced that in the remaining three hours of daylight, the group should find a beach to camp on, away from the jungle critters. It looks as if the island is almost like a U-shape mm. and we came into the lagoon. Yeah. For me, the best plan at the moment is to get back in the water the yeah. and walk yeah. along the mangrove slopes. No, so we I, stay in the middle. I strongly object to that. Why? Right, what, 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 right, what reason? for my reasons are this. We don't know what, how deep that water is. We don't know what the floor of the water is like. We've no idea how far we're going to be wandering through three foot of water. We well, don't know how high we're going to be up here again. Well, one at a time, we've got to, you know. If we had to, out of push, we could easily make camp here. It would be an all right place to stay if we had to. It's better than the mangrove swamp. There won't be any crocodiles up here. Yeah. We're away from mosquitoes a little bit. Whoa, guys! Hey. Oh, <laughs> shit, look. It's a boa constrictor. They're fucking quick and they're pretty vicious. Just shows we're not alone. Yeah. Great. <laughs> How exciting. I've just seen that. I, don't, I just can't see myself being able to sleep here. I just stay awake all night. For all we know is a field right there. From what you've seen of the island so far, how many fields have you seen? <laughs> <laughs> I think I don't want to sleep here either, but yeah. I don't think I can cope. Really? No way. I'm not sleeping tonight. I already know that. From here on in, you're totally on your own. 13 British men have been abandoned on a remote Pacific island <laughs> with nothing but the clothes on their back and a few basic tools. They now have less than a day's supply of water left. Oh, God. The men are utterly alone, filming everything themselves. Hey, hey. Yeah, good to meet you. I want to find out what happens when you take away all the comforts of 21st century life. Whoa! I think there's something primal and deep within us all that actually wants to know, can we still cut it? Sometimes it takes a little bit of squeezing, a little bit of pushing to find it in people. Guys, camp one. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Welcome to the jungle! <laughs> The men have chosen a clearing in the jungle to sleep in. But with the remaining daylight, they must find a source of drinking water, as their supply will be gone by tomorrow. One option is to keep thrashing up through this way, but the only the, what we've got to consider there is that we could thrash for an hour, yeah. get to the top of a hill or something, and there's bugger all there, we haven't found any water, we haven't found anything. So one plan would be some scouts go that way, so the base stays here. Just be careful, the, the plants here are alive and they will get you. While one group, headed by retired policeman Tony, stay behind to prepare the camp for the night. Don't forget, this is your bed tonight. The cleaner, the better. See you later. Hi, hey, um... Call centre worker Ryan and the others head off to scout for water. Ryan? Left or right? Right or left? This way, that way? This way. Let's go, then. The island is one square kilometre of mangrove swamps and thick jungle. The men have no idea where to head to find water. And currently, it's 30 degrees, with almost 70% humidity. I'm too hot and I want a drink. 
In this sort of heat, when you're working really hard, you can use up about a litre of water an hour. That's how unforgiving it is. And you can take your eye off the ball for a second, dehydration will get you. And the number one priority for them is finding water. Without it, they'll last probably about three days. Water. What you found, Zaki? Stagnant water. There's more over there. <laughs> we found water, boys. Salt. No, that is salt water. Fucking hell, cock. Bit scared that the island is just like this all the way. Really? Yeah. That's what it feels like at the moment to me. I hope not. I'm hoping there's some sort of open space where we can look at the, start, the sky. Yeah. Well, here we go again. Yeah. Fucking egg. Hungry. Yeah. Thirsty. Yeah. To be honest, guys, this almost looks like... This looks like animal oh, tracks, doesn't yeah. it? This is a definite trail, isn't it? Good trail. Mate! Hold it's on. the beach! It's the beach, guys. I can hear it right there. And you can see the water, the sun glinting off it. It's just beyond this prickly mass. Yeah! Palm trees! Woohoo! Oh, yeah! Oh, thank God. Yes! Yeah, baby! <laughs> Shazam! Oh, my God, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Pelicans. Wow, beautiful. It's <laughs> so beautiful <laughs> compared to that mangrove swamp. It's just perfect, isn't it? This is ridiculously wonderful. We can sleep tonight, yeah. knowing full well that we're going to come down here tomorrow for a dawn swim, and it's all going to be beautiful. Although I'm well tempted to just have a quick. Well, should we I'm, jump I in? Am, I am tempted. Do you want, should we oh, let's, let's have a go. Come on. <laughs> Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, from a dank, sweaty forest full of snakes and spiders and scorpions. It's amazing how happy simple things like just finding this is. Life may not be so bad here. Sam's been stung on the face by a jellyfish. Oh, shit. They'll take the pain away. Go there, piss in your hand, rub it on your face. Ah. And then wash your face. Can you see anything? There's, yeah. There are no things. You can't pull them off anyway. I mean, try not to touch it. You can piss in your hand, you rub it on your face, your and it'll stop the pain. <laughs> just feel it right, it's like right on my top lip really? and across my nose. Okay, 33-year-old bachelor Sam Nightingale works in London as a neurologist. You know, I'm the kind of person that sets myself a lot of challenges, you know. Uh, um, I'm not kind of satisfied with where I'm at. I, you know, once I've achieved something, I kind of want to set the next goal. You know, Maybe that's something that makes me eternally a bit restless, but it's also something that makes me achieve lots of things, and it's kind of got me to where I am in life. <laughs> actually, that really, actually really stings. <laughs> Just do that. I'm not, I'm not pissing on my face. Let's go. Do it. Here. You sure you don't want to piss on your own I'll face? I'll piss on your face for you if you want. Will you? Uh, Kiff's preparing some now. <laughs> <laughs> right, you think we should start heading back to camp now? Before it gets dark. It's a shame we haven't got enough time tonight to move down here, but I think it'd be silly. The men have less than seven hours of drinking water left. They urgently need to find a fresh source. At the jungle camp, Dean and Tony have cleared a spot to sleep for the night. I'm, I was quite worried about doing this because like, I've only been out for a year. So. Did, being from... did you say you came out a year ago? Yeah. Oh, I, I, that was going to be one of the questions yeah, I was Yeah, yeah, I came don't... out a year ago. Lovely. Because I'm from a Roman Gypsy background, Yeah. it's like it's harder for me to come out because everyone there is married by the time they're 17. Yeah, yeah. How are you accepted by them now? Absolutely fine. Like, my dad, like my dad I, I was most scared about telling my dad. So it's like, it is so nice. It's so nice to just be able to be myself and, like, know who I am. That's awesome, mate. Yeah, I'm so chuffed for you. Mate. 
Sam, Rupert and Fletch continue to look for a drinking supply. Well, watch your hand, mate. Amps, oh, amps, amps. Ah, oh, bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what we got here, guys? What's that? Water? No! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> it's not the best colour. It isn't, but it'll boil up. We can filter it, mate. That's, um... Should we just make sure we see if it's fresh? Yeah, 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 yeah. How deep's that? It's about a foot deep. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot of water. That's... Oh, yeah. That would that'd... keep us going for a week yeah. or two. Yeah, that's fucking... That's a great find. So, rather than drinking it, we should... I might just have a little bath in it. Wash my balls off. I mean, it's, 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 it's our only water supply at the moment. Yeah. We should probably look after it a little more. Uh, yeah, we should have a balls out, balls out the drinking water. Rule, <laughs> yeah. rule, one, rule number two. I love that piece. <laughs> if they want to drink this water, they'll need to boil it first. And that means they'll need to light a fire. One of the problems of drinking stagnant water is that the animals also drink from it. They do more than that, though. They also shit in it. And where you get faeces, you're also going to get waterborne parasites and all manner of different infections. So without fire, really, for them, it's like a ticking clock, exposing them to dehydration. Ah, oh, my boys are home. Did you find anything? Yeah, we did, mate. What yeah? did you find? Yeah, some fresh water. You found you're fresh kidding. water? Yeah. <laughs> fuck for that. Yay, yeah, boys. Their supply of drinking water is dwindling fast. They need to get a fire lit, and quickly. Is that for the bow drill fire, Joe? Yeah, just a bit of string that we just found just as we came in near the swamp. It's just about long enough. 23-year-old sheep farmer Joe plans to create fire using a technique that dates back to the 4th century BC. He'll spin two pieces of wood against each other using a bow. But like all the men, he's only had a day's survival training. To you first. Okay. We'll do ever so slowly. Ready. Oh, yeah, shitter. <laughs> Fucking thing. See so what? I'm starting to get my first hunger pangs. You're joking. I'm just very, very vaguely, just a little knocking in the distance. A little hunger pang. <laughs> She's only going to get bigger. That's... Come on, spin me. Ah. Ah. Fucking thing. Everyone else wet? So yeah. yeah, wet through. Yeah. I need to uh, explain something to everybody. Go on. Um, Half webbed so... feet. Hoofed feet. Worse. Worse. I'm just trying to think of a way to explain it. Explain myself. I've got a, I've got a tattoo that um, it looks really bad. It was a mistake getting it. It doesn't mean what it looks like. Everybody knows what it looks like. You don't even have to say it out loud. It means peace, love and unity. Uh, I was just interested in that sort of subject, but basically, basically... Swastika? Yeah. Oh, fuck it. That's but I'm so embarrassed of it now, no, I regret it. Fine. Come on, don't worry about it. You want to see it? Five, there it is. That's what it is. It was stupid, but, you know, I was young. It's just one of them things. Has anybody found any nuts anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> Not apart from you, mate. <laughs> Shit, it is this fucking string. <laughs> or even smoke yet. Looks like it might be a dark night tonight. At night, under the forest canopy, it's now completely dark. And the only way to film is using infrared lights. Ah, yeah, yeah, shit, yeah. Drill. After three hours of failure, the push to get the fire lit has now become an urgent group effort. OK, let's start speeding her up a little bit. There we go. That's good. There we go. Oh, oh. shit house. <laughs> for me, the big concern is everyone's hydration. The potential for people to get really sick if they're, they're not drinking enough. And we're, we're so overexcited about being here. And, you know, it could so quickly get dangerously dehydrated. So I think the main priority now, now that we've found water, um, is getting the fire going and getting a system of getting water boiled and filtered and drinkable because uh, that's absolutely critical. Okay, let's stop there, Fletch, stop there, stop there. Well, I am in the pitch black. I am g genuinely so scared. Oh, Grandpa, he's gone to sleep. He's snoring. Is he? How do you manage that in this weather? I don't know. 
This is the last chance. If we don't get fire, we go to bed. We have failed at making a fire. I really thought, I just thought, I thought we'd be able to do it. And uh, I don't know, I, f I feel, feel pissed off, feel really pissed off. Hopefully nothing's gonna crawl on me in the night, but I'm gonna try and not think about it, try and get some shut eye. Have a day off, we are, fuck me. <laughs> Absolutely shattered, to be honest, yeah. The men only have a few hours of water left. If they can't light a fire in the morning, their time on the island will be over. What is that on my leg? I am cacking myself. Oh, fucking hell. It was, I've never slept on the floor like that before. It weren't nice. It really weren't nice. Dawn, the men's first morning on the island. No, that, that, that wasn't good. I, I got an hour towards the end, um, but, yeah, just, just couldn't sleep. It was just so uncomfortable. <laughs> so that isn't a very good pillow. <laughs> wasn't quite, didn't quite get it. I tried to turn it on his edge for a while, but it didn't really do it either. <laughs> I had a man sandwich. It was really nice. I was the Frankfurt and I had two rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, they found a stagnant pool of water. But without fire, they can't purify it. This is all we've got left for our drinkable water for today. The risk of dehydration is now critical. Let's have a bit of a meeting. But I mean, I think everyone agrees our priority is getting a fire because that leads to everything else water, yeah, yeah. food, you name it. So I think we just really just sort of break it down to real, real basics here. I think yeah. we've got to get stockpile water, we've got to filter it and we get a fire, if we can get that happening today, because yeah. if we don't sort those three things out, yeah. filtering, water and fire, then yeah. we're looking in, we're, we're being trouble, and today's going to go quick. Turn off the, uh, turn off the infrared, there we go. The men head to the beach to search for dry wood to make fire. Oh, oh, oh. On the way, Joe hunts everywhere for the perfect fire-making timber. It's just wet. It's too wet. It's too wet. Too wet, Dan. Yeah. Oh. At home in the Peak District, Joe works on his family's farm. I know it sounds a bit extreme, but I think I would um, I'd bring back national service. Because I think that young people should learn what our grandfathers used to do. And people learn a lot more about respect and things like that. There's a lot of respect missing uh, the, with some, some youth people of today. If we get fire, that's it. We can move on. We can food, purify water. So it all comes back to fire. So, uh, so yeah, there's a bit of pressure on today. This is going to be the first time some of the guys have seen the sky since yeah. you yeah. got here. Oh, man, this is, this is a drink. It's <laughs> <laughs> the world. Welcome to Paris. Oh, my God. Whoa. <laughs> this is something. Mate, this is the bollocks. Oh, look at this. It's just, like, loads of containers. This is just a council tip, basically. The amount of rubbish that, uh, that is washed up on this beach is it's horrendous, really. But I suppose for us, it's a blessing. Mate, that's a find. That is perfect. Now we need to find a hammock. Yeah. One thing that staggers me with these desert islands, however remote they are, is just the amount of trash you get washed up on the beaches. But for these guys, they really need to embrace the fact that one man's trash is another man's treasure. The men are on the island with only the bare minimum. This debris discarded by ships and washed up on the beach could be a lifeline for their survival. Can I just take the opportunity to introduce you to the fourth, 14th member <laughs> of us? He's our survivor. Give a big round of applause for Percy the Pig. Percy! Hey. 
After a night in the sweaty jungle, the beach is an ideal place to cool off. Yeah, look at that. That's the money shot. The money shot's right there. <laughs> Tony, the pride of Yorkshire. Thanks, Flex. The men may be enjoying the seawater, but the supply of drinking water has now finished. So I've just been for a wee, first one in a long time, and I saved a little bit for, to share with you. You lucky things. So, not a healthy looking colour, I'm sure you'll agree. I think we've got an injury here. IT trainer Mike Fletcher is in trouble. Come, on, come up to the camp. Yeah. OK. Really okay, have you been poisoned or not? Yeah, I don't know either, mate. Up, I think the this area of the Pacific is notorious for deadly stonefish. Yeah. With skin-piercing spines, it's the most poisonous fish in the world. It's more than just a rock, do you think? <laughs> it shouldn't hurt that much, should it? OK. Ah, oh, bollocks. <laughs> it's, it really hurts, mate, more than it should. Ah, sit down, sit down. I don't know whether um, Fletch has stood on uh, like a fish. Oh, really? Or, oh, or whether um, it's a graze on a rock. <laughs> Leakage engineer Craig is also a part-time St John's ambulance man. I can't see anything inside there. That's just fresh blood coming out of there. So I don't I don't think you've I think it's just a rock. With a puncture wound, yeah. you normally just get one point. Yeah, but this is quite spread across. Cool. I think you might uh, live to tell the tale anyway. Oh, I'm guessing I'm not gonna die. That's let's, that's let's my prognosis. That, yeah. It's very tricky. It lulls you into a false sense of security, this beach. I think when you're in the jungle and um or well, the mangroves, you're sort of, you know, you know you've got to crack on, but you hit the beach, and of course we're so used to hitting, hitting beaches and just relaxing. But actually, if we don't get fire today, then people will start to ask the question, can we ever get it going, you know? Wow. Joe and Dan have found some driftwood, and the desperate quest for fire continues. Right, let's just start, and that's it, start it like that. Oh, yeah, this rock's good. Is it? Yeah. What compared to last night? Yeah. Okay, oh. Keep going, keep going. You're getting tinder? Got some in there. Through friction, they need to heat the tip of the wood to create a smouldering ember. What's Hold it. Put away slowly. No, there's no ember. No. Motherfucker. It's very hot. It's very hot, isn't it? So it's uh, out would of the you, sunshine now. Would you say it's now. stifling, Tony? Sorry? Would you say it's stifling? I've never known it like it. Uh, it the, the thing is this, yes, I've been as hot as this, yeah. but this is constantly hot. Yeah, it doesn't let up. It doesn't let up. Here we go. The drier, harder wood should give them a better chance of starting the fire. Start nice, that's it. Let's just get it going up and down, that's it, like that. In the midday sun, the temperature is now hitting 35 degrees. That's it. Ah, start. I've got stinking headache. Have you? Oh, God, I'm hot. <laughs> What's that? I said, God, I'm hot. Energy levels are flagging, are they? <laughs> I'm very hot. Are you finding your concentration a little bit wavers? Mind wanders a little bit. My, I think I, it, my concentration will be a bit more focused when I'm happy that there's an unlimited supply of water. Yeah. This temperature, we need water quickly. We've found the fresh water. We, we, it's, it's a stagnant pool. We need to, we need to boil it. It's a little bit desperate now.
They have been trying to get an ember for eight hours. Nice and long. Oh, oh no, no. Out of it. Just put it away. Oh, 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 oh. Right, we've got one. We've got one. We're in. We're in. Don't. OK, just stay there, though. Just stay there, Joe. Stay there. Lights. Okay, right. Now let's get some of this together. Okay, guys. Okay, just drop her in. Drop her in sideways. Slowly, slowly. Really gentle. Just to get something. Just get the knife and just slowly drop her on. There we go. Yep, she's on. She's on. It just didn't take. I need to sit down, man. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling a bit right now. Yeah, it's I am, not going to lie, I am. I'm too hot and I want a drink. Yeah. The lack of water is having an unusual effect on Rupert. I think you're definitely dehydrated. I fucking seriously, my piss was a colour of um, Guinness. Yeah. It was not good. It was so, not good. And I've, I've just pissed out so much liquid just walking up there. So it's getting serious a little bit, so we need to... Um, it is, it is, and we need to sort of up the ante a little bit. This is 24 hours in. Right now, getting this fire going is just crucial. And if it doesn't happen today, then I think we're really going to start getting into trouble. I am concerned now. I am concerned. Um, I really think we need to pull our finger out. Finding the heat unbearable at the moment. It's the first proper midday we've been in on the island. We've experienced the heat without the water, without any water. Halfway through the men's second day on the island, and it's over 30 degrees in the shade. Come on, lads. On the front. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Thanks. <laughs> For the past 12 hours, Joe, Dan and Fletch have been struggling to light a fire. This is it, boys. I can feel it. Big, long strikes yeah. to you. Big, long strikes. The drinking supply they arrive with has now gone. They urgently need to boil the stagnant water they've found to make it safe to drink. Mm. Fuck. Dehydration is taking its toll on 70-year-old Tony. My mouth is very dry now. My mum, Agnes, 91 years of age. I'm 6,000 miles away from you, mum. <laughs> Doing well, mate. And I'm missing you. Yeah. <laughs> It's just not taking. It, it all went there. That should have gone. Joe and Dan are trying to produce a smouldering ember using friction, but everything has to be just right. We realise now that the uh, drill has to be the same width all the way down. The stone's got to have the hole in exactly the right place. Yeah, the hole's got to be dead flat mm. and very, very close to the little V. So it's like each one of those things has stitched us up. A lot of ducks to get a line. Yeah, along yeah. the way. This is it. Like a long, big old long. If they fail to get a fire lit today, they will have no choice. They will have to leave the island. This kind of has to work, because this is, uh, without this, no water. OK, stop there. <laughs> Fingers crossed, everyone. Fingers crossed. OK, go on then, drop her on. Gently, like a butterfly. Yes! 
this. This is yeah! it. This is it, guys. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> That's the best Good moment of day party. two. Oh, my God. Wow, we got fire. Yeah! Oh, my God. How's it looking, Fletch? It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Oh, oh my god, look at him! Well done, Dan. Well done, mate. 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 That needed to happen today, and I've been getting headaches this afternoon just from dehydration. Mm. The team needed water. Well done, man. Well done, lads. Well done, boys. Well done, boys. Pool of life. I certainly had kind of visions before we came of at least some kind of running water and some little pool where you could we could wash clothes and ourselves in fresh water. As long as like no animal comes and dies in it, it should stay reasonably safe. Not quite heavy, Anne. This is the first go at boiling the dirty water. The fact that it forms a head isn't very reassuring. <laughs> no. Rupert and Sam are using the tins found washed up on the beach to boil and sterilise the water. That's it. So, done. That's kind of got to be at least a litre and a half in there, maybe two. Yeah, it's only like 39 tins we have to boil in one day. <sighs> Seriously? 39 tins a day? It's a lot of tins every day. Ah, oh, she's up. Rolling boil. Look at that. We've got a rolling boil? Yeah, there's a like, lovely pot of hot water with scum all over the top of it, and we can drink it. It's brilliant. It smells like, like a fire, a metal fire. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, then. That's probably a bit rusted there, but... Mate, get it down. Dude, mate, you look oh, the part man. with the charcoal in your face. Yeah, yeah, a bit good, like tin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you know what? Yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. fine. It does the, it does the yeah. job, right? Gentlemen, we have water. What do you reckon, Siri? It's not bad. It's all right. It's, no, it's, it's just, that's I mean, not bad at all. It's, it's like, kind of like the weakest cup of tea you've ever had in your life. <laughs> Tony, brought you a brew. It's a desert island version of Yorkshire tea. Please enjoy. Smells good. Looks good. You're good health, gentlemen. <laughs> Happy? It's bloody delicious. This is some of the finished product. Looks like piss. Tastes a lot worse. Mind keeps wandering. I keep on thinking about uh, bottles of ice cold water or can of can of cola, ice cold straight out of the fridge. Oh. And all I got to drink is this bloody warm, worse than piss water. It may not taste great, but the men now have a reliable source of water. Their next problem is where their first meal comes from. I'm properly hungry. Oh, yeah. I've got a knot right there. <laughs> I just want something to eat. I'm starving. We've been talking about water all morning, and in 10 minutes, the, com the, the conversation's just switched. When you're deprived of food, it literally becomes all consuming, it's all you think about, it's all that motivates and drives you. I need something. These guys have got 13 mouths to feed, they've got to be resourceful. Oh, hello. What is it? Ooh. Scorpion. In the fire, that's silly. There he is. There, there he is. There he is. There he is. Got him, got him. I've got him. He's got small claws, guys. He's one of the bad ones. He's aggressive. He's aggressive. Oh, Jesus. Don't, don't kill it if you're not going to eat it. Yeah. Of course I'm going to eat it. Mate, I'm starving. Right, okay. There's a stinger off. OK. Let's kill him, because I feel bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, God, I can see its guts yeah. inside. That's not going to be tasty, guys. Come on, man, you're making us wait. Come on. We want to see you eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Okay, guys. Come on. Good. No, just don't. Just down in one. Blow it and then just get rid of the legs. Just protein in the legs. You said you were hungry. Yeah. Yes. That's man food. Perfect. Man food. Yeah. How hard does that taste? Oh, it's food. <laughs> <laughs> Let me oh. see. I'm proud of you, Sam. That was, that was, that was amazing. <laughs> the other thing that hunger does is it saps your morale. You know, it's easy to be positive and upbeat and enthusiastic and energetic when you've got lots of energy. But when you're experiencing failures, it becomes a kind of spiraling downward circle of lack of food, lack of morale, lack of energy. We're finding little bits, but what we could do with it is a good, hearty meal. We need something of some substance. I think I'm hallucinating. I'm so hungry. Uh, really? We're 13 strapping blokes. So we're we're going to need a feed. And um, at the moment, wondering where that's going to come from. Next time on the island... I've never been so hungry in my whole life. The fight for food begins. We're all losing weight, people are on the edge. The fucking pelicans seem to be eating more than I do. Chuck it, chuck it! Ah! Fuck! Busters! Holy shit, the bed, man. That's a big one. Come on, fucking nature, give us some food. Just pass me a coconut yeah. shit. Get, get him! Ah, I got him right between his eyes, but it broke the spear. I have no idea where the next meal's coming from. If I'd have known... This is absolutely fucking nuts. <laughs> that it was going to be like this. You've got him. You've yes. got him, mate. I'm not too sure I'd have applied to come. There's no doubt that 21st century man has come a long way from our hunter-gatherer origins. Good morning, it's Ryan Hurth calling today to book the annual service on the boiler. In Britain today, we take food, shelter and warmth for granted. Have a cappuccino, please. And most of us consume rather than create. I want to find out what happens if you strip man of all the luxuries and the conveniences of modern living and then force him to fight for their very existence. Thirteen ordinary British men have been abandoned on a remote, uninhabited Pacific island. With just the clothes they stand up in and a few basic tools. Spear! Yes, spear! Keep eyes on it, keep eyes on it. Hey, ah! Oh. These guys are going to be completely alone, filming everything themselves. Can I pass the camera up to you? It just seems like it's jungle forever. When pushed to the extreme, does modern man have what it takes to survive? One wrong move. And this place will take you down. This isn't about talk, this is about action. Genuinely, it will take these guys to the edge. Can't believe Ryan, it! Ryan. This is dangerous. Coming in, coming in, great! I really believe that deep within us all, we still have that survival spirit and instinct to overcome even the toughest of odds. Two days ago, I abandoned 13 men on the island to fend for themselves. From here on in, you're totally on your own. With only the clothes they stand up in. Three knives, three machetes. And a few basic tools. We've landed in the middle of an alien movie. Three of the men are trained cameramen but they will be living under exactly the same conditions as everyone else. Mate, it's the beach! So far, oh, yeah. they've established their beachside camp. I, I just can't see myself being able to sleep here. Made fire. You did it! Oh, my God! And sterilised stagnant water to drink. Looks like piss. Tastes a lot worse. Scorpion. But they've hardly eaten a thing. And the reality is they're getting weaker by the minute. And if they don't find food soon, 
what is a hard situation is going to become an awful lot worse. Good morning. This is Tony Fletcher. There we are, it's a bit like a war zone. Bodies all over the place. Here we have Ryan stirring. Morning, Ryan. How was your sleep? What is sleep? Let me tell you about the comforts here. There is none whatsoever. Sleeping in the sand gets in every orifice. Fucking covered, mate. So make no illusion, folks. This isn't a set put up by Channel 4. This is bloody real. Do you know, the next time I gently complain to my PA about booking me into a three-star hotel instead of a four-star <laughs> hotel, I just want somebody to punch me in the face. I'm properly hungry. Oh, yeah. I've got a knot Dan, right there. I, I get little pangs every now and again. Every time, no. I, I thought that's because I needed a dump, but it wasn't. A hunger pang because you need a poo. Since being abandoned here, the men have found almost nothing to eat. I want to eat something. Yeah. Oh, mate, a big fat fry up would be epic, wouldn't it? It's day three and I'm starting to fantasise about food already. That's yeah. a bad sign. Isn't yeah, it? it's, it's not a good sign. The average man needs two and a half thousand calories a day. Energy levels are dropping. I would eat a scabby horse in between two piss-soaked mattresses at the moment. Right. That sounds quite nice. Yeah, have you got that image? Yeah. That's how hungry I am. The problem with extreme hunger is your metabolic rate then drops, and your performance drops, and your decision-making ability drops, and you need both of those things to hunt effectively. You've got to be able to move, you've got to be able to think smart, and it can easily become this downward cycle. The hungrier you get, the less effective at hunting you get. I think, I think it's starting to kind of kick into people just quite how hard this is going to be. The uh, hunger pains are starting. We've got to keep going and get through these first few days and get what we need to kind of then make life comfortable. Otherwise, it's going to be like this the whole time. I've ensured the island has enough food and water to keep them alive, but only if they have the ingenuity to find it, catch it and kill it, which is no easy task. The island's interior is covered in dense jungle and mangrove swamp, which is full of poisonous plants and potentially deadly wildlife. We've got to start using our eyes yeah, yeah. and our ears and, uh, you know, just figure out what this place has got to give us, because at the moment it, it, it feels like nothing. Yeah. Good luck. If the men can't find a safe source of food quickly, they won't have the energy to hunt and they won't survive. Oh, man. What are you trying to look for, Ryan? Limpets. Limpets for the guys. Be careful. Wish I brought my shoes. Oh, fuck! Where are we going, dude? Tell the people where we're going. We're going to get very hungry very soon. Yeah, yeah. Which is why I'm trying to catch something now. I'm I've got my bait here, the live hermit crab. Hey, let me zoom in on that, let me come in. There we go. Is that yeah. for the fish? Yeah, that's for the fish. He knows what's coming, that's why he's trying to get out. None of these men have any previous experience of surviving in the wild. Oh, really? They can be a bit slippy. With only three machetes, three knives, and whatever debris they can scavenge for the beach, they're having to improvise. Okay, so I've made this four-pronged spear. Give to give bigger area for spear fishing, hopefully. And I'm just blackening the tips in the fire to try to dry them out and harden them. We have found some string. Yeah. We've tied it to a little bit of a, a stick that's got a bit of flex in it. Yeah. And then we've fabricated a hook from a coke can. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a good hook. Thank you very much. It's time to kill Mr. Hermit Crab. Sorry, mate. This is pretty much a shot in the dark, but we'll see. Oh, 
And there goes my fucking baits. Nah. That was a massive waste of time. Oh, here we go. Got... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just pulled that bit of rock out. <laughs> 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 oh, what are they? Little snails. Nice. And ten of these each? Thinking, ten snails each. But they're just, they're not enough, are they? I'm not, I'm not Show us that one. Well, it's tiny, it's not gonna... No, exactly. It's not worth the energy of picking it out. No. If you think about it, how many calories have we burnt coming here? Yeah. More than a couple of winkles. Yeah, nothing. Desolate. What do you think to the fishing so far, Fletch? We've already just been dangling, haven't we, rather than fishing? We don't want much. Just take, take the hunger away. It's absolutely beautiful here, but the beauty's taken away when you're trying to find food. And it's harder than I thought. The, the fucking pelicans seem to be eating more than I do. Leakage engineer Craig has been scouring the shoreline for food since dawn. Good find by Taffy. Proud of myself now. <laughs> Let's go eat, boys. Gentlemen, I present to you breakfast. Right. Craig hopes a group of fish he found can make a tasty lunch for the men. Still wet. It's not been dead long, but you can see it's dried up quite a bit. And... Not bad. It smells, for bait. It smells rank. Not a chance I'm eating that. I mean, no. Nah. Sorry, mate. Let's keep that well yeah, out of camp. Well yeah, well out of camp, Somebody mate. Wanna... It stinks. Yeah. Bad, that's minging. I think I'm hallucinating. I'm so hungry. Uh... We've gone out and looked for things, and we haven't found any. But I haven't given up hope. In a last-ditch attempt to catch some supper before nightfall, Saki and Joe have their sights set on another prey. I think if he goes for them, yeah. they'll come over here, and then I can go for them. OK. Yeah. I can deal with the helicopter right now. Right. Bollocks. Sit. Run, get a stick, quick. Get a spear! Get a spear! Spear! Saki spotted a stingray in the shallows. Keep eyes on it, keep eyes on it. Hang on. Keep eyes on it. If they catch it, it could feed all 13 men. But these fish can be deadly. Stingrays have these long tails, then with these pointed barbs on the stinger. This has got toxins in it. If you get one of these near your heart, it can kill you. Yeah. And that other one has a really long it's really a long yeah. sting, isn't it? That's a long sting. <laughs> Despite the danger, Saki, Sam and Mike are desperate enough to take it on. Oh, shit. OK, OK, eyes on, eyes on, guys. Ah, he's there. Right. He's right in front of you. Hold on. To your left, to your left, to your left, left. Punch it, punch it, punch it, punch it. Punch it. Oh, shit, look, I broke my... I got right between his eyes, but it broke the spear. Well, it's... It fed everyone, wouldn't it? Yeah. This is your dinner right here, but Jesus. Having risked their lives chasing the stingray, the only reward for the hunters is a couple of snails each. Uh. <laughs> I'm hungry. hungry. Yeah, I'm very, very hungry. <laughs> a bit weak. It's absolutely gutted. It's absolutely gutted. We don't, just don't know what else to do, really, because we can't find any bloody food. <laughs> I think part of the problem is no one can really tell everybody what the right thing to do is because I don't think anybody really, really knows what that is. Mm. 
like you've lost more weight, Saki. Hmm? You look like you've lost a little bit more weight, mate. Probably. After almost a week, the men have had precious little to eat, beyond a scorpion and a handful of snails. Yeah. I have no idea where the next meal's coming from. To the point where it hurts. It, it hurts stringing sentences together and, and just trying to find the energy to do things is, is now and impossible. I think, gosh, we've got another 25 days of this. All present and correct. Stand at ease, guys. Stand up, no sitting down. You pay more attention when you stood up. After yesterday's failure to find a decent meal, 70-year-old ex-policeman Tony wants a group to try a more organised approach. The main things are three machetes, three knives, all sharpened. That's dealing with our tools. One thing I've noticed is there's a direct correlation between the age of a guy and the amount of faffing about he'd have to do. Repeat after me. Machete, Machete and knives. Great guys, thank you. We just wanted to get going and uh, search and find something useful, and we had to sit and wait and talk and talk and talk. I know you've got a plan, but it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go get some more, get some dinner for the guys. Yesterday, the men found little food close to their camp, so now they're planning to search further afield. Reporting for duty, Grandpa Tony. Carry on, Craig. The island has eight kilometres of coast, with five beaches. Today, the men are going to explore the shoreline to the north and south of their camp. But they'll have to keep their wits about them. They're sharing the island with some dangerous foes. The Cayman crocodile is the ultimate prehistoric predator. Their mouths are lined with basically these razor-sharp teeth and they can bite with about 3,000 pounds per square inch. That's three times as powerful as a hyena or a lion. More dangerous than any snake, scorpion or crocodile is this fella, the death apple. And this is enough to kill not one man, but 20. And when you're surviving on an island, you're hungry, you see what you think is edible fruit, so tempting to pick it up, eat it. End game. Wow, it's getting really hot now. It's just thick, thick, dense forest everywhere. There's nothing, I can't see anything if we want something to eat. Food may be scarce, but the island does have bounty of a different kind. Look about, guys, because this is a huge resource. Dental hygiene <laughs> sorted! Don't go on the <laughs> The beaches here are littered with waste that's been dumped in the sea and carried here on the tide. Plastic bottles everywhere. Oh, look at this. We found a fishing net. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. These old nets, washed up on the beach, could open up the oceans to the men as a source of food. Good find. As they say, give man a fish and eats for a day. Give men a ton of fishing net and he can have a crack of fishing. Gentlemen! Yay! Hey. Further down the beach, there's more good news. 28-year-old Saki may have found the lifeline the men so desperately need. <laughs> There's coconut. Can't hear anything. Fall to the fucking brim. Found a way of getting coconuts down. I, uh, I'm just finishing it off. It's worked a bit, but it's splitting. Look at that. What could possibly go wrong there? <laughs> Some coconuts up there, but that's a bit of an ask to get up there. <laughs> Yeah, mate, that is ingenious. Oh, the coconut good. saw, Mark One. Oh, hello. What's this? <laughs> it's good for the dead fall. Give it a Rupert, you might need. Oh one. yeah, sorry. <laughs> Safety hat. We, uh... Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> Look, it's just made. <laughs> Whoa. Way. Two. Well, should we have a celebratory coconut? I'd love one. Sweet and satisfying. So good. Coconut is incredible. There is a, definitely a reason that they call it the tree of life. Mm. Mm. It's like suckling from the teat again. <laughs> I never did I it. Can't, I can't remember that far back, mate, I'm afraid. You never done it? What, sucking on a nipple? 
No, tried human breast milk. Um, no. No, I can I can honestly say no, never. Well, it's not nice. Apart from coconuts, there are really very few other fruits on the island that these guys recognise. And even though coconuts are a good source of energy and fluids, if it's all you have, after about three days, it's going to start to give you diarrhoea, and then that's just going to dehydrate you further. There's only so many coconuts on this island, there's absolutely not enough for three a day for all of us yeah. who are at our state. Yeah. Right. So we can't just go, oh, we'll drink Crack coconuts. them open, drink them and throw them. Yeah, the coconuts have given the men a much-needed boost, but if they're going to survive here beyond a week, they're going to need protein-rich food and fast. I'm feeling the hunger pangs. Just to have, like, a form of meat in your belly is going to be immense. Not even meat, just real, like, proper food as opposed to little bite-sized mouthfuls of coconut. Matt, can you just put a drop of water in there for me, please? The men may not have enough food, but they do at least now have the means to brush their teeth. Dental business coach Chris has even improvised some toothpaste. What the F? I brushed my teeth with charcoal. No one's going to kiss me after this. Let's do this. Oh, my God. Wait, it tastes like egg. Uh, mm. I feel so much better already. Here's a smile, Dino. Oh, Big honey. Green. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Honey, this is horrible. The men's goal for the afternoon is to put to use their newly found fishing nets. Yes. Can you see how I'm threading it through? Supervised by keen fisherman Mike. And then what we're going to do is tie floats to here. I am desperately, desperately want to catch you off food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Desperately. You know, I'm running on empty and uh, it's, it's, it's hurting now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but I think I've... Just, just a few big fish. Yeah. Oh, mate, mate. Yeah, it'd be just awesome. awesome for everybody. Good luck. This 30-foot net is the best hope the men have had so far to catch themselves a vital protein-rich meal. Yeah, keep this one up. Let, drop, the, drop the bottom one. That's it. Head sideways now. Yeah, you just keep, that's, that needs to be dragging on the bottom as much as possible. With the net set, the men's attention turns elsewhere. Has anyone had a wank since being here? <laughs> no energy, no time. No time. The last thing on my mind. There's time for a wank. Yeah. Though. What were you doing? Maybe. Did you cross my mind on the second day? <laughs> really? Maybe, in the rocks, a like, couple of days ago. <laughs> a rock wank. Rock wank. <laughs> it's quite nice, actually. Sitting in the bay, watching the... Going the tree, you, did. Like, hey, you did this. Huh? You did this, Yeah, damn right I did. <laughs> Mate, I've got a sex drive of a fucking... You, you actually had a wank? Yeah, I've had a wank. <laughs> What, well, around on them rocks? Oh, over there! Near where I had a shit? Yeah. <laughs> Only once. Right, told me where you had right. a shit. Right, told me where you had a shit. Right, told me where you had a shit. I was just banging right. one out. Remind me not to go around there again. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing, boys? It's now two hours since Mike and the men set the nets. All right, this is when it all gets tricky. Come together, come together. All the men's hopes for food today are pinned on a decent catch. Do you want another pair of hands? Just a gentle for the time being. I certainly hope they've got 13 big fish as a minimum. One for each guy. Cock. Well, that was shit, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Disappointing. Really disappointing. No fish. I thought we really had something going. But the um, fishing net, well, it gave us nothing at all. I am good at talking about fishing, but I've never put a net out to sea in my life. Yet, yeah, as the so called fish fisherman, I feel responsible. After an empty haul, the men face yet another long night with empty stomachs. Lamb, lamb shank with uh, mint sauce, bread and butter pudding to finish yeah. it up. Like crumpets, I love crumpets. Yeah. Loads of butter on crumpets and they just melt and the butter... Oh. Treacle, treacle on crumpets. So good. Yeah. Driving me mad. 
can't hack it. I want to eat something. Oh my god. I've never been so hungry in my whole life. Just something in my mind then. Just click. That's it. I'm starving. Fuck, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Oh man. As soon as I get home. Chocolate spread, peanut butter and toast and crackers and soft cheese and marmite cheese and crisps, tortillas, fajitas, fried chicken, club sandwiches, sub sandwiches. Man. Oh, fuck. Mm. I can't wait to get off this fucking island, seriously. I can't fucking wait. I'm gonna get one of those bastards. <laughs> it takes me all fucking months. <laughs> Look at them. We've got a rock we can chuck at them. After a few days with barely anything to eat, the men are now getting desperate. Give me a start, I'm gonna chuck at them. No, I'm gonna kill one. Dean, wait. Be stealthy. Chuck it, chuck it! I fucked it up again! What happened? I slipped as I threw it. I think I broke my hand. Oof. Really? Mm. 21-year-old Ryan lives in Stockport with his mum and sister. Going to the island will be the first time I've lived anywhere else other than, other than Stockport. Um, I'm excited to see a different type of life and I think it could make a man of me. I did walk really far once with no shoes on, and that was very challenging. I'll be honest, I punched the sand. Oh, no. <laughs> it was a lot harder than I was expecting. Oh, no. And do that, it looks like it's down here, doesn't it? Dr Sam confirms Ryan's suspicions of a broken knuckle. So this is called a boxer's fracture. Yeah, yeah. don't punch the sand again. Yeah. It hurts I think, there, I think, is I'm it? just so annoyed at myself, cos... I I was... Were you annoyed with the sand as well? I was annoyed with myself. So you punched the sand? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't um... want to punch myself in a survival no, situation. No, but... no idea. That's the last <laughs> thing you want to do. After a broken hand and another missed meal... I just want food. <laughs> ..the consequences of the men's failures are becoming more and more apparent. Some of the lads just seem to be wasting away in front of me. I don't know if other people are noticing it. And I'm not going to mention any names. Some of the lads that don't have much to lose, they're getting really thin. We're 13 strapping blokes. We're going to need a feed. And um, at the moment, wondering where that's going to come from. So I think we're going to have to, you know, man up, get those machetes out, uh, head inland and just answer the question that really is troubling us all at the moment, which is, where is the real food? The next few days will be critical, as the men use their last reserves of energy to try and hunt down the island's meatiest prey. So we're going to head down to the mangroves and see if we can see a caiman. I just saw a massive iguana head upland that way. Whatever it takes to find this food. Oh, I know. This is our first night excursion. We're into new territory. There's some funky noises happening tonight. Humans. You can see some? No, but I'm sure we will. Oh. Where are they? 
These look like limes. Look, there's more. Right, fingers crossed for a good old harvest of fish. Yeah. Feeling just shite. Failure after failure. <laughs> well, I mean, you guys look knackered. <laughs> no caiman. No. With nothing to show for days of energy sapping hunting, the men are on the brink. Food is a lot scarcer than we had anticipated. Um, that's going to slightly test our spirits, but then we, we always knew it wasn't going to be holiday. You know, we're not, not asking for the moon on a stick, we're just asking for fish each, or half a fish each. You know, that's, that's all we need. It's been bloody tough for me. It's been really hard. Uh, no energy whatsoever. You need to my mind about uh, leaving the island. So far, every attempt the men have made to catch fish with their nets has ended in failure. You think our looks changed? Today? Yeah. Time will tell, mate. I've been knowing about 10 minutes, but um, I desperately hope so, mate. This time, to improve their chances of a catch, they've left the nets out all night. Wow. Did he get away, lads? Oh, that's a big one. Yeah, we've got a net full, mate. No joke. Oh, pull him out, pull him out. Look at that. Oh, wow. Woo! Look at these oh, bad boys. Oh, Whoa! Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Fish! <laughs> <laughs> Team Gilnet. There you are. Oh, shit. Yeah. Beauty little catfish. Oh, nice. Look at that. Plenty on him. He'll get out, mate. <laughs> mate. Oh, I'm going to have a full belly tonight on fish. That's chewed everybody up, isn't it? Yay! Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful fish. Absolutely beautiful oh, fish. Right. We're going to be eating fish for dinner tonight. Flipping great. So relieved. I'm so relieved. The mood of the camp is just lifted. Two of the group's youngest members, Dean and Ryan, are given the honours of gutting the fish. This is different to cutting yeah, someone's hair. Got in there, yeah. Shove it in and saw it through. Doing it for the team. That's it, that's it, yeah, that's it. Yep. Grab it, oh. that's it. <sighs> salted it, a little bit of lemon juice on it, nice salted lemon juice on there. We're going to wrap them up. As the men eagerly await their fish supper, thoughts turn to home. I'm craving titties, man. I miss them so much. <laughs> I like little small titties. Short, sometimes elfin-like, and quite androgynous. <laughs> Just tiny tits. I, I worry about you even more. <laughs> Are you sure you're not in the closet? I like petite girls with big boobs. I like big, big bush. What? Oh, no. Great, great big, eight, big, great big 80s bush. Oh, retro. Not going down the legs, but uh, shy of that, as big as possible. Uh -huh. I think it's nice to know that you're having sex with a mammal, that's all. Like, it's not an, and an adult mammal. <laughs> anyway, I should be careful what I'm saying how I like hairy minges. <laughs> After days of desperation and hunger, the men can finally eat. Oh, hello. So this is the fish, parceled up, expertly by Fletch. So if you just take them up here. Oh, looks nice. That looks the part, mate. Oh. That's a really weird texture. It just like, disappears into a kind of mush, doesn't it? Oh. Ugh. Ugh. That was possibly the worst fish I've ever tasted in my life. It doesn't taste right for some reason. I think it's rotten. <laughs> it's because we didn't drop the guts out quick enough. Oh, man. Left dead in the nets for too long, the fish have started to decompose, and the long-awaited supper is inedible. So disappointed. Gutted. Tastes like poo. It's a poo fish. I think you hit the nail on the head there. It does taste like poo. This place looks like paradise. It's actually a bitch. It really is. Jesus God, when I signed up for this, uh, I knew it was going to be hard, but I didn't realise it was going to be this hard. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Bal. There's, there's a slow acceptance that we've got a, a long way to go yet. 
and uh, it's all uphill. The reality of island life is biting. You know, it's easy to be positive and upbeat and enthusiastic when you've got lots of energy, but when you're sapped of it and you're experiencing failures, it becomes a kind of spiralling downward circle of lack of food, lack of morale, lack of energy. Come on, nature, give us some food. This morning, Rupert and Saki are heading to the mangroves, where they set one of the group's nets. We definitely crossed here. Yeah. We went that way. Yeah. If they don't find food today, their time on the island may well be over. This is the second riverbed. So this is where we were. When the tide's in, these mangroves are teeming with life. The tangle of roots are a breeding ground for many animals, like reef fish, turtles and the Cayman crocodile. The tide's out, isn't it? Yeah, there's no water here today. Yeah. Okay. Nada. I wouldn't call it riddled with fish. All right, let's get the net out. <laughs> right down in. Something happened here last night. Something fucked the net. That is snapped, yeah. This is so fucking Caymanville. This is where a Cayman has a serious advantage. There's a skitter across the top. He lives to fight another day. Rupert and Saki must return to camp with nothing but a broken net. Let's go. This ground is so treacherous. Oh, this... they came in like that. Holy shit. Holy shit, the bed, man. He's watching us. Mate, he was so... He was right next to us. He was. Fucking hell! This, sorry, this is what we're talking about. That's a big one. That's dinner for days, mate. Oh, I got cool. this. No, no, get the string. We'll yeah, make yeah. a noose, make a noose. A few days ago, Saki and Rupert couldn't have imagined they'd be confronting one of nature's most fearsome predators. Then I'm going to take that motherfucker down. Armed with just a piece of string. Hello, mate. You're going in my belly tonight. We need to hurry because you've got to start warming up. Yeah, no, no. I don't worry, I'm doing this one as quick as I can. Mate, he's growling. Yeah, he knows, he knows, he knows. You just get it on both of them and bring it slowly. If you can get it on when it's closed. That's it, that's it, that's it. Oh, no, 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 get both, get both no, no, closed. No. It's all right, you've got him, you've got him. You've got him. Got him. Well done, well done. You got him. It's five feet almost. I hope the cord holds because uh, he's looking at me in a way that is not, let's be buddies. These came with crocodiles and grow to up to about 15 foot in length, but even small ones, you know, they're just a bag of powerhouse and muscle. And what they do if they get hold of you, their instinct is immediately to roll. They call it a death roll. And if it's a small one, it will literally rip chunks of flesh out of you. And if it's a big one, take whole limbs off in that roll. All right, we've got it. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God, you just ripped that. That's easy. See what that'll do to your leg. That, if that Came was your... for a second and he just smashed that tweak right. to bits. This guy pulls like a bitch. Yeah. Oh, so he's death rolling now. He's death rolling, yeah, yeah. Come on, get him out. Stay. Get him out, get him out, get him out. OK. Keep him there, keep right, him stop, there. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah. That's good, that's good. Yeah. All right, I'm just trying to get the bottom draw. Before being abandoned, the men only had one day survival training, which included a basic technique for animal trapping. That's it. Got it. Yeah, you see, now we can't roll. Yeah. OK. Now drag him out into the open. Hold on. That's hold on. it. Hold on, let good. me get a good grip. Let, let him roll, That's let him roll. Well done. Let me get a grip. Drag him out into this open. Hang on. He's got his leg behind that tree. Perfect. Perfect. Hang on, hang on. Oh, there we go. Look at the shape, because yeah. then he can't... Yeah, well done. All right. You've got him in the shade. Okay, you got cool. him? Do you want to take both? Yeah, yeah. He's going to watch you. Yeah, you've got him. You've got him. Ah, hang on, hang on. You've got him, you've got him, you've got him. You've got him. You've got him, you've got him. You've got him, mate. You've got him. Hands on the, hands on the, hands on over the eyes, well over done. the jaw. Push it right that's on it, that's, that's it. it. Just hold it together, that's it. That's it. And then loop it. You've got him. 
Ah, yes, mate. You got him. <laughs> That's what you call teamwork. Well Job done. done. Wait, well, we got to get him home still. Ah, mate. Saki and Rupert will take the Cayman crocodile back to camp, where they'll decide who will kill it. I mean, I hate killing things. I really do, but... But we need to eat, mate. We are hungry. So this, this is a kind of bittersweet. There's an incredible elation of having jumped on the back of a Cayman, yeah. knocked it to the ground, um, and caught it, and the whole little hunt and all that stuff was just fucking exciting. Um, but I also feel bad that we're gonna go and stick a knife in this guy's head and eat him, but it's the way of the world. I, I think want. he's lost the fight for now, but I yeah. know, oh, he's moving. Because we don't want to kill these things. But at the same time, we don't have anything. We have no food. We've got empty nets, as far as we know. And this will feed all of us. It takes you back to nature, being out here. You've got to eat, no matter what you think about. Slowly but surely, the inner savage is revealing exactly. itself. Okay. Guys, we're done. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> I was like... Yeah, this is the one time that I yeah. wish I had my phone with me to take a picture and be like, look at what we've got! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boom. Look at that. Boom team. This is nuts. This is absolutely fucking nuts. Get him out, get him out, get him out. You got to him, yes. you got to him, mate. After days of fruitless searching, Rupert and Saki have caught a Cayman crocodile in the mangroves on the far side of the island. We evolved to run away from these things. Yeah. The fear that kind of stirs in you. So it's yeah. a primal need to get out of the way. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, hello. That is a fucking Cayman. Yeah, they're yes. punching the air. Shut up. They've got a fucking <laughs> Cayman. Shut up. Go on, let's go. Let's go. Ha <laughs> ha, here they come. They're running. Oh my, yeah. God. Oh my days. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight we feast like kings. Yeah. Yeah. What a beauty. That's a big fucker. Still alive, we haven't butchered him yet. Yeah. Mate, Mate. fucking congratulations. Yes, buddy. So my bit came in. What happened? Mate. Rupert jumped on his back and had his jaws. We got two ropes on him. Yeah. And then held him, pulled him out. He's we had kicking. to pull him out and make He ripped he, this branch open, went just for a bit half, and like just... the size of your arm. Just yeah, mate. Just it. took it out. You but we got him. absolute legends. Real. Wow. Yeah, mate. Wow. I'm scared Well done, lads. All right, lads. Well done. Well done. Mate. Back in camp, the hunters show their catch off to the rest of the group. Cheers, gentlemen. Tonight we shall feast. Right. That's what that boy is. And maybe even breakfast as well. Look at the meat on that one. That's amazing, guys. Oh, Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. 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 I'm sure we'll all get a gator when we're all done. Good on you, Wes. Yeah, well done, fellas. I want, I want to catch a crocodile. That's my main goal for the island, but probably not going to happen. No, you, you can't do it by yourself. No. No way, dude. We were both a little jittery. The thing yeah. is about it being strong is you're fighting for dinner. That's fighting for its life. Yeah. yeah. The men must now decide who's best suited to kill the croc. Dan knows what to do, I think, with that sort of stuff. Oh, yeah, but Dan said Joe should do it. Yeah, should kill it. it? Yeah. He said Joe should do it because Joe's, like, the animal expert. I want to be here when that happens. A beer? I want to be here when oh, that happens. Oh, I want to be here when that happens. They've nominated 23-year-old Joe, who's lived on a farm all his life. But have you butchered stuff before? <laughs> Off the um, record. <laughs> He wants to say right, yeah. He uh, does. Uh, hurts. Yeah, he does. I've done a little bit in the past. Yeah. True. How do you feel about killing this animal? Yeah, I'm nervous, to be honest. Yeah. Very worried. Mate, you don't have to do it if you don't want it. No, oh, well. Yeah. So if you don't want to, I'll do it, mate. If, you, mm. if there's any, if you have any issues, pal. So there's a spot just there. See the back of the skull. Yeah. So you've got to get in there and just on the hill and just jam it in straight into the brain. Yeah, Put all your weight on him because yeah. he will kick. Ready? Yeah. That's it. That's it, you got him. You got him. Yeah, yeah I think he's dead. He's dead, mate. He's, good. he's dead. Stop. Yeah, uh, he's gone. Yeah, he's gone, see? Quick and painless. Good yeah, job. Balls. Well done, pal. It'll twitch it. for, for approximately two hours. Right. After, yeah. after it's dead. Yeah, that's just muscle tissue. Yeah, that's yeah. me and you. We yeah, all will. How are you with that, Ryan? You right? Was done very... Very humane, yeah.
I think as a society we've become so sanitised about you know food and we're so used to going to a supermarket and you pull something off the shelf and you know it's meat and you might not even know what sort of meat it is. It's nicely pre-packaged and you take it home and you never think about where it's come from that an animal has been slaughtered to feed you. I thought I valued our life like the same, like anything from a scorpion to a human being, but seeing that and then it just sent me over the edge a bit. Mate, it's the first time any of us have seen that, so... I know, it's just affecting me, that's all. No, totally, it's affecting me I as well. I don't um, believe it's done the most humane way possible and everything, but... Yeah, it's still one of these weird things. Oh, yeah. I don't know why, it's doing the same... It did the same thing to me. Yeah, I don't know why. I even caught the damn thing, so I don't know why. I don't know. I feel sorry for the little bastards, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mate, that is just oodles of pure, beautiful meat. Jesus, look at that. Oh, oh that's just pure, pure meat, mate. He's done us proud, that Cayman. Huntsman Saki has the honour of beginning the feast. About to have the first taste of a Cayman. It smells like heaven. Wow, <laughs> look, look at that. that. Golden brown and white underneath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> is it good? You have no idea. What's it like? What's it like? It's fucking beautiful. <laughs> oh, baby. Mate, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Take that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's things. Oh, it's so meaty. Oh, man. Mate, it tastes like a kebab. <laughs> good kebab or bad kebab? Like, like a good kebab. Like, right, good. Is that a chicken so. shish? Okay. My body's just saying, thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone's been flaking a bit today, but that is just in time, really. Tonight, for the first time, we're a tribe. Uh, not a bunch of guys who've been chucked on an island. We're actually a tribe today. Everybody's done the bit. Everybody's had, oh my god! Everybody's had a corner. Everybody's had a job to do, and everybody's got on with the job. And we tonight, we're a tribe. Um, oh, my belly's so full. It doesn't take long for the men to feel the impact of their first meat meal. Can I borrow someone's head torch, please? You going for poop in the sea? I'm not doing the sea, no. I'm going to go and uh, oh, dig a dig a hole. You better go down far away from camp, because somebody's shat near the camp there, and I can smell it. Yeah, that's Where? Bad. Somewhere, so whoever shits in the wood has been shitting too near the camp. Well, it wasn't me. Mate, I've shat in the sea. <laughs> I've had a shit on top of a Scottish mountain before. I had a shit overlooking the Grand Canyon. I had a shit in a car park. <laughs> Next on the island, Henry! Tempers Flare. What the fuck are they doing? What, what, did you just fucking do a wanker sign towards me? Fuck you! If they don't start looking after each other, they haven't got a cat's chance of making it at the end of this month. We failed on the soft approach. And what, what are you proposing as a hard approach? To make the lad feel like a twat? We can't help him. So we, I suppose we've just got to say our sweet goodbyes. Ryan! Ryan! There's no doubt that 21st century man has come a long way from our hunter-gatherer origins. Good morning, it's Ryan here calling today to book the annual service on the boiler. In Britain today, we take food, shelter and warmth for granted. And most of us consume rather than create. I want to find out what happens if you strip man of all the luxuries and the conveniences of modern living and then force him to fight 
for their very existence. 13 British men have been abandoned on a remote Pacific desert island. With just the clothes to stand up in and a few basic tools. These guys are going to be completely alone, filming everything themselves. OK, I got him. So we've landed in the middle of an alien movie. When pushed to the extreme, okay. do they still have what it takes to survive? It will become Lord of the Flies. Did you just do a wanker sign towards me? Um, I think we'll start sticking some of the weaker ones on a raft and send them off to another <laughs> island. This isn't about talk, this is about action. If you think you can do it, prove it. Can't believe right, it! Right. This is dangerous. Coming in, coming in, Grace! One. It's now the second week since 13 British men were abandoned... It's like suckling from the teat again. Oh, ..on a remote Pacific island. And all they have to keep them alive are a few basic tools. Look at that. What could possibly go wrong there? Three of the men are trained and experienced cameramen, but they're living under exactly the same conditions... Good luck. ..as everyone else. Thanks, Dan. So far, they've hunted down... Holy shit, the bed, man. ..and killed their first big prey. Seen that is, and it just... Set me over the edge a bit. The longer we're here, the more our inner savage past will reveal itself. <laughs> Tonight, for the first time, we're a tribe. But despite this success, food is now running dangerously low. And the men have drastically lost weight. The reality of island life is biting. Oh, I'm going to kill one. Living on the edge of existence... He's stealthy. ..the men are now losing hope. <laughs> I think it broke my hand. Oh. oh, it smells a bit down here. Hello. Am I sitting in fish guts or something? There's not a very good smell here, um, but f it. So day eight and shit has gone down. Tempers are about to flare. I can see arguments about to kick off, honey. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. In the men's exposed camp, bitter winds from the Pacific have dropped the temperature by nearly 20 degrees. Ryan, get your feet off the bar. Ryan, get your feet off the bar. Or I should pull them off. Get off, Tony, get off. Ryan, no, just don't. Listen to me. You'll fall asleep. Your feet are in the fire. Where are you going? Don't speak to me. Ryan's feet had gone over the safety bar. It's his personal safety that's important. Ryan! Retired policeman Tony from Yorkshire has taken on the role of fire safety warden. Ryan! To be honest, I don't care how he speaks to me. I don't want to be woken up at all. I have trouble sleeping. The only way my feet were going to set on fire in the position that we're in is if they were going to spontaneously combust. Uh, I'll just sit near the fire, wide awake, what? Three feet away, okay. arms, legs, arms and legs crossed. Right, I'll sit and watch you. Go on. You don't need to sit and watch me. No, well, OK, I won't watch you then. You'll go get down. Shouting in the bloody ear hole in the middle of the night. We're not actually in Korea. Um, <laughs> and there is no enemy. <laughs> you dis disturbed everybody when you did it. Well, in I could... In the manner that you did it. Sometimes... Just, just, just taking a slightly different point of view with certain people might be, might be worth doing. It's a consideration, isn't it? I'm sorry for disturbing you, Fletch, but which was the priority? Ryan's feet or a few guys sleeping? Sleep never killed anybody. Fire doesn't burn feet here. That would have been the end of Ryan as part of the team. have had just two hours of unbroken sleep. This is where it gets hard. You might just have to stop and just appreciate what we've got in front of us.
Well, I think one of the intriguing things about this experiment is that the wild is unpredictable. And what's interesting is see what's going to happen when you're tired and you're hungry and you're thirsty and you're missing home. Then you learn what people are really like. And that's when it becomes interesting. I didn't realise just what, what, what a hunger meant. I really didn't. It's not a rumble in your tummy. That, that's long, long past. Chopped off 13 men, gonna pick up 13 hobos. On the island, lack of sleep isn't the only issue that's plaguing the men. I am covered in it, look. My face, my cheek, my forehead. I've been absolutely bit to shit. By night, they're subjected to constant sandfly attacks. You see those? I've never known an itch like it in my life. It's like someone's stabbing you in the hand with a really hot pin over and over and over and over again. Look at the state of me. If they think this is fake, <laughs> they can fuck off. <laughs> Ryan's invented a unique way to beat the critters. Uh, a couple of days ago, doing the diary cam, realised they had zombie flesh from the insect bites. So uh, I had a bit of spare fabric. Started to sleep like this. Yeah. Keep the insects off my face, yeah. and it seems to be working. Is that the back of your pants when you pull it down? No, it's the front. Oh, is it? It's good, mate. It's ingenious. 21-year-old Ryan is the youngest man on the island. He lives in Stockport. I don't think I've seen the side of him being a natural hunter-gatherer, but I think that you can develop that. I like to think that I can make a bed or nest out of anything, you lay the towel down. I like to think of myself as quite practical when it comes to things like this. It doesn't look like much, but after a night out, this has saved your life. <sighs> Maybe you could say I'm a survivor in the sense that I don't let myself die. So far, Ryan's struggled with the severe conditions, but he's trying his hardest to fit in with the group. Ah, oh, this is great morning. Do you know? Oh, you've lost your tits, bro. <laughs> Ryan's really struggling, but um, he makes me laugh way more than anybody else here. You can buy unicorn meat off Amazon. It's basically just spam with glitter in it. Oh, <laughs> 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 don't get it. <laughs> However, living in such hostile conditions can take its toll. Let's go, man. You feeling rough or what? Ah, I just feel minging. I'm not going to lie, I'm not feeling too great. <sighs> this, this is still hurting me. That's making me feel like an absolute prick. To make matters worse, I just had a dream about Natalie, my beautiful girlfriend. And, uh, a huge part of me wants to go home. A huge part of me. Despite one solid meal of Cayman crocodile, the men are all suffering, eating on average a dangerously low 300 calories a day. Who needs Domino's pizza when you've got snail, bro? <laughs> and starvation is fast creeping up on them. It's one of our big issues right now is we're not catching any fish in these nets. I think we need to move them. So you've got to track them, you've got to trace them. It's the same as anything. And if we just sit here waiting for it, we're stupid. If we don't have food, we don't have energy, eventually we all sort of roll up and die. So we need to, we need to have food. The men's camp is established on a beach at the southern tip of the island. I've ensured this island has enough water animals and vegetation on it to keep the men alive. But only if they have the ingenuity to find it, catch it and kill it. Day 12, and there was no fish in the net again. The men have made fishing nets from the washed up debris found on the beach. But so far, they've caught almost nothing. I'm not the best swimmer, that's why I don't help out with the gill nets. I can swim, but I can't, I can't save my life swim. If I was in a life and death situation, I'd die. What is it? Poofy. Oh, no. All we're catching in those nets is poofish. Poo fish. And when I say poo fish, a poo fish is a fish that tastes like poo. Literally tastes like poo. Yet again, the men have left the nets in the warm Pacific water too long, and the fish have died and begun decomposing. So this is the poo fish. It's inedible, considering we would eat almost anything right now. 
Yeah. And we're not eating poo fish, so it tells you quite how much it tastes like poo. Such a shame, it smells like the right kind of thing. This is revolting. When Mother Nature slams that larder door firmly shut, Things in a group can rapidly go downhill. You're hungry, you're despondent, and it's so tempting to give up. But like so many things in life and in the wild, it's actually about how you respond to those crisis moments. So where are we going, Sam? We're going foraging. In their second week on the island, and with energy levels at rock bottom, the men's very survival hangs in the balance. How good would a caiman be right now, Chris? I have vague and fond memories of caiman. It's the same people always working hard, I think. Fletch, That's Matt, one. Kiff, Dan, Sam, Saki and Chris. They're the kind of ones that are always keen to go and do shit. And there's a, a kind of core group of resters. They do a little bit here and there, just enough not to completely piss you off. One so-called rester, Ryan, the youngest member of the group, has been spotted aimlessly wandering alone. We found him. What's he doing all the way up there? It's good to tell us what he's up to before he goes. Hi, hey, mate. How are you? I feel a bit useless at the moment. Do you? Why? I just feel weak. I don't think Ryan's really sort of engaging with the group and uh, generally helping out. He's quite distant. Yeah, disengaged with the whole process. So I'm just, I'm just genuinely worried about the guy. As the adventure and experience has got harder, relationships between people have become a little more tense. Everyone is very aware who's, who's doing what in the camp now. Don't give me a dress, right? Again. No. He's just idle. It's just an insult to the rest of us. You know, he's only young, and people are probably judging him a little bit too quickly, if I'm honest. I gotta be honest, I don't think Ryan will see 14 days on the island. I don't think he's gonna make it, to be honest. Some people are looking for work and other people are not seeing it when it's right in front of them. Say Ryan, you know. He's... he's sitting down there doing nothing now and has been for the last hour and a half. You know, we're too close to the edge of existence to, you know, to have passengers. I don't know if I'm strong enough to do this challenge. I need to go up there, clean up. I can't. Train, but I can't. Right, I need to go. Right, mate. In the midday sun, the temperature is 35 degrees and 70% humidity. You say you weren't any good at rugby? I played, but I was the smallest in the year. Really? Ryan's been asked to help the others prepare a new sleeping area inland, away from the sandflies on the beach. There's just no point just moving two or three leaves back. Either do something or don't bother doing anything. That kid's head is up his arse. What's the matter, kid? Are you going to kill somebody? Kill him. Could have just gave me the broom and said, might be easier with this. What's the matter, mate? Well, honestly? Yeah, go on. Ryan. He's been sat in his arse all morning. And other people have been knocking their pipes out. Yeah. And we were clearing up the top camp. And then he comes back and he's got a stick and he's just moving that leaf to there, that leaf to there, that leaf to there. And I've been. <sighs> Sorry, I'm dehydrated and I'm just a bit grumpy. Thanks, so. Thanks. But it's just. Who are we, who are we on? Have a guess. Ooh. Ryan, do you see everyone working here? You know, you've been walking around in a dream this morning and not doing any work. And we are fucking working hard. I was trying to help. I feel like I'm going to fucking collapse, man. I'm trying my fucking hardest. I really am. Yeah, but you well, OK. I don't need but... you. Oh, sorry. I'm really sorry, buddy. Oh, don't but be we're like carrying that. Don't you. be like that. I know you are. It's driving me fucking bonkers. <sighs> you can't can't do it, Dan. I need to go. You need to put yourself in a positive frame of mind. You can't. Impossible. It's too late. You're not useless. I am. I clearly fucking am. And don't worry about anyone else. Worry about yourself. I can't stand the idea of one person. 
thinking like that about me. Ryan's starting to great with a few people, including myself, and pretty much everything he does here is a pointless exercise. Ryan's really quite distant and a bit disengaged with the whole process, so I'm just, I'm just genuinely worried about the guy. Three p.m. Most of the group are gathered in the shaded area in camp. It's a long time to be walking. I've got a feeling he's, he's, um, he's gone. You know. Who's that, Sam? Oh, Ryan. Ryan. And, uh, Let, let's Ryan. deal with the situation now. How long has he been gone? Well, he's been gone for a couple of hours. Has he got his hat with him? I know, but he shouldn't no, go. He, he shouldn't, shouldn't go on his own. It's pretty clear what the rules are, and safety-wise, mm. you shouldn't go up on your own more than 200 metres in the camp. Ryan has now been missing in the unrelenting tropical heat for two hours. But also, it's in the middle of the day. He took, to my knowledge, he took no water with him. Last seen heading south, alone and without water. Ryan is in imminent danger. So I think two guys should initially set off to find him. Yeah, agreed. I'm quite happy to go and look for him. You know, we're here, we're here to survive as an island community. It is for us as a community to sort this out. But it's pretty fucking devastating, that, yeah. to lose two guys right now. Yeah. yeah. And, and not be connected to because guys. we've got nothing. With little energy left, Two men searching for Ryan and not gathering food is further depleting their reserves. He's going out, lone wolf, doing what he wants, when he wants, sulking, behaving like a teenager and all that shit, and it's just... It's... Would you go as far as to say that if he carried on behaving like this day after day, you'd just rather he wasn't here? Yes. Anyway, let's go. Do it. Yeah, okay. I'll take the camera. Thanks, mate. Good luck. Thanks, man. Bye. The island has a circumference of eight kilometres. It's covered in dense forest, harsh rocky terrain and has perilous tides. Let's race up the rocks. You and I are pretty good at that. Let's yeah. do that. So even the most experienced survivor can get in trouble here very quickly. Ryan shouldn't be clambering over this stuff. On his own? No. Ryan! What's he fucking thinking? He's a 20-year-old kid from Stockport. This is a hostile place. The problem is, he could, be, he could be hidden behind any of those rocks up there, or any of these rocks here, but... Ryan! Ryan! I think we've now got a young man in a very vulnerable situation, which could be have dire effects on his own personal health. Mm. As far as I'm concerned, he's, he's breached health and safety, and he's, he's not only jeopardised his own health and safety, he's jeopardised our health and safety. We are putting ourselves at risk end yeah. to go and find him. Ryan! Where the fuck is he is the big question. Even when the cameras aren't rolling, the men's audio is recorded 24 hours a day. If I do die, please, someone listen to this. And I say, Mum, thank you for giving me life and for giving me everything else after. Ryan! Oh, hang on, there's a footprint here. Yeah. Footprint here. See. Daylight is now running out. Ryan has been missing for five hours in the 35 degree heat and without water. Ryan! The thing about dehydration is that it can creep up on you very, very fast. And the average human body probably carries about 80 litres of fluid. And once you've lost 30% of that, the reality is you're going to die. Ryan! Ryan! A lot of people are very fucking angry because he's putting the group at risk. Where I come from, if you keep running off despite the rules and you act like a stupid little child, that's how you'll get treated. None of this, oh, let's be nice to him, let's try to bring him round. No, you get told the fuck off. You get told, if you keep being stupid, you're out of here. That's how it works where I come from. One less, one less mouth to feed. Well, there's less mouth to feed. One less mouth to feed, one less person to worry about. I like him. Yeah, I no, really like I, him. No and one, he, no one he's dislikes. so funny. And he's and all those great things, but I just, I really, I get my gut feeling is that he, he just ain't cut out for it. Well, I've worked with teams of blokes and yeah. women, and if anybody in the, in, in the team, I know they were getting well paid as police officers, but at the end of the day, if one was letting the team down... Why, well, they'd have to go. They went. Yeah. 
You know, they had no option. And I, I get what you mean. Like this, this, uh, this, this is like a bigger situation as well because of the, 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 the this, heat. This, the, this is life threatening. This is life threatening. Yeah. yeah. Run! <laughs> so it's coming in really fast. We're going to have to start scrambling through the forest to get back if we don't find him soon. With only 60 minutes till sundown and the tide coming in, Matt and Rupert have a choice. Ryan! Call off the search and leave Ryan at the mercy of the elements. Ryan! Or return through the jungle in the dark. It's just thick, thick, dense forest everywhere. I have to SOS this fucker. I've given up on everything in my life. I'm not giving up on this. Ryan! Ryan! Oh, there he is. You got him? Yeah. He's walking away? No, coming towards us very slowly. Uh. And he looks a bit fucked. He's an idiot. He is an idiot. That's how people die. Where have you been, mate? Just be walking down the coast. Yeah, hang on, stop a second. Stop, 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 stop. Have you had anything to drink? No. You have had nothing to drink? I don't want anything. You do need something to no, drink. I'll just get back. Mate, we're no, all going to get back, drink. but you need something to drink. You'll collapse on the way. Let's sit down for a second. Right, okay? let's sit down over here, please. Down soon. Yeah, I know. Brian, you haven't drunk for at least four or five hours. And you've been in the midday sun. Sit down and let's get some water in you. But at the moment, let everybody down. Sorry? Don't worry about that. Don't worry. This you see you let everyone down. Okay, don't worry about it, mate. I'm more concerned that you... Get you. You get better, mate. I'm more concerned you get better and you need some water in you right now. Yeah? And you need all of that in you. You've been a long way. Take it easy, just sip it, get it down slowly. Get the lot down. You need to have drunk about two to three litres a day. And I don't think you've drunk even one litre a day, have you? No. Quite anything good. Fuck off. Coat hanger, always handy. For Grandpa. For Grandpa. <laughs> I'll keep him happy. Sorry, guys. Don't worry about it, mate. We're just pleased you're safe. That's the main yeah. thing. We're pleased you're safe. That's the important thing, mate. You're safe. Because we were all getting a bit worried for you, and it was the middle of the day. You're being too nice to me. Well, <laughs> shouting no. doesn't really help, does it? But I appreciate your apology. Yeah. That's nice. Thank you. No, that's worth something. Yeah. Let's get you back to camp. Oh, get hydrated. Get coconut in you and let's your poke up. I'd love to say we've got a feast prepared, but um. You've got my call. <laughs> oh, no, there'll be a big car. I'll carry that. I'll carry oh, it. No, 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 I'll carry, carry it. Right, I want you to concentrate on walking. You need to You're staggering around and stuff, OK? Right. So uh, you get one hand on your stick. I've had water now. Yeah, but you... Yeah, no, but it'll take a while for it to work. You just yeah. get going. I'd be surprised if we make it round. <sighs> yes, we are being a little bit too nice to me. Still. Get him back. I don't know. Can at least be found him and he's safe, which is the important thing. Did you see any before? No. I did genuinely feel like I was going to die at one point. Yeah, I'm not surprised, mate. A big log landed on my foot. I moved it eventually. How long were you under the log? I don't know, about five minutes. Okay. You know, we're not looking after him. No. He's not. Our, he's not one of our children. He's and he's he's a grown man. He's here on an equal basis as a yeah, man he is. with the rest of us. Obviously, a soft approach hasn't worked. We, we failed on we failed on the soft approach. And what what are you proposing as a hard approach? What's your definition of a hard approach to make the to make the lad feel like a twat? You know, mate, you're part of the team. Follow the team, so we do worry about you. Yeah, we're all going to get through this together, yeah? So... I'm not giving up. Ah, oh, there's no question of giving up. You'll have to carry me off, dead or alive. Oh, I'm yeah. not walking off the island. That's a 
I've got one idea that we tell Ryan in no uncertain terms the position he's in and he stays in camp with me under my watchful eye. And if he decides to wander off, then I appear to have two options. Let him wander off and somehow notify the guys to go stop him, or I physically, physically try to stop him, which could constitute an assault. I'll tell you something, mate. They'll all be pleased to see you. Did he get some food? What? Did he get some food? Did he? Yeah. No. What's he carrying? Bag of shite. Tony, Brian's got a present for you, mate. It's lovely to see you, mate. Thanks, it's sorry. really lovely to see you. I'm almost in tears. To bloody well see you. Stop it. No, I'm not stopping it. We just want you back, mate. Come here. Come here. The men have spent the day concentrating on finding Ryan, which means the only food in camp are leftover snails. Find any oysters, Joe? Oysters? Didn't find any oysters. Ryan, did you, at any point did you consider us guys? You didn't tell us where you were going, that you'd been gone hours and it was coming in dark? Don't really know how to answer that. Sorry? Don't really know how to answer that. Well, either you, 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 you did give a shit or you didn't. I don't think it's fair to say that I don't give a shit. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to understand how you can be gone for so long and just not come in and say, oh, sorry, lads. I'm, I'm over this now. I'm here to survive, not babysit. <laughs> Now, I'm a very honest person, and this diary cam is a very honest thing. It's an experiment. It's not a weakness if you can't stand it and you need to go home. I guarantee you 13 people will not leave this island. 13 people will not leave this island. You know, this, this place looks like paradise, but uh, this place can be very hostile. One wrong foot and you're in trouble, you're lost, or you're dehydrated, or you're in danger. You have to respect this place. Oh, well done, mate. How are you this morning, mate? All right, yeah. Better? How's the hand? Just getting there. Yeah. One or two more days, I think. Yesterday, in the 35-degree heat, Ryan went missing without a supply of water. Forced to take action, Rupert and Matt found him nearly five hours later lost and severely dehydrated. Some people are giving me the cold shoulder today. Hopefully I can change everyone's attitudes towards me. I feel like some people have already made their mind up. The last few days have pushed the group of men really to the limit. And the truth is, if they don't start looking after each other, being resourceful and surviving, they haven't got a cat's chance of making it to the end of this month. Well, I just want to say sorry to everyone about yesterday. I want you all to know that I wasn't storming off in a mood for anything. I just went for a forage, you know, it was against protocol. I just didn't want to return empty-handed, uh, got a bit lost, and then that's, that's why I was gone so long. So, yeah, I'm sorry. This wasn't him going off to go and forage stuff. It was a cry for attention, a cry for help, a cry for whatever. I should have been finding food and I wasted it uh, on him. If you had someone back at home like Ryan, would you throw them to the wolves? I don't think you would. You'd help them. You'd try and find their strengths and weaknesses. It's too easy to say he's lazy. Jobs for today. Who's on water and fire? I would like to do water and wood and fire today. And I just need one willing helper who's prepared to graft their nuts off. Do you want a go with me? Yeah. I will that. beast you all day. Yeah, I don't mind. <laughs> I mean, I will, but at the end of the day, we'll have done a shitload. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd like to give Ryan a chance, you know, because, you know, I know I'd had a go at him. I think he deserved it. And there's no good just sort of pushing someone down if you don't try and pick him up again afterwards. Come on, Ryan. I think all he needs is someone's approval. I think that's what he's after. While Kiff takes Ryan on the water run, the others desperately scour the island for food. I've said this many times, but I cannot wait to have a seafood platter at home. Do you know what I mean? I cannot wait. These are good. These are falling out of the tree above where we are. And 
They're not the best thing you're ever going to eat. When you bite into them, kind of a cross between mud and an old strawberry. Right now, it's doing it for me. Just gives you that little bit of something, yeah? I think that one's, rot that one's actually rotten. Exerting energy in this heat can cause a man to sweat over a litre of water every hour. OK. Ooh. <laughs> Take that. You Stop. do tops, I'll do... Are you sure? Yeah. Collecting clean water could mean the difference between life and death for the men. I've watched Ray Mears all my life. I've read the book, Robinson Crusoe. Uh, I've just always been sort of a fantasy to come to Desert Island and do this. I'm just finding it a lot harder than what I imagined, so I'm just going to try and get my head down and get on with it. When did you leave school? I did go to college. I did business, English language, geography and biology. Failed them all. I think I had such a lazy attitude. Did you go to university? No. I got chucked out of pretty much every school I ever went to. Cos I was a lazy little bugger. <laughs> Probably much like yourself. I've been doing sound recording for 17 or 18 years now. I'm the guy with the hook. <laughs> I think because my jobs enable me to travel and see all types of people doing all types of things, the one thing I've learned, with kindness, things can be OK. And I think on the island, that is what's going to do it. Here we go. Chuff, chuff. Ryan, he's just pulling his finger out. Kip was on him, babying him. But if the babying works, then the babying is what we have to do. Breathe in, and then just watch. The fact that Ryan can't swim means he can't help with tasks like pulling in the fishnets, and this isolates him from the group. That slowly. So Kiff wants to help. Okay. I really wanted to prove myself. I'd even have a go swimming out doing the gill nets, depending on how that swimming lesson goes. So you, you, your body's sort of turning. See, I'm already losing confidence. You'll be, you'll be good. Let's just get in and do it. Big shout out for Kiff, really, because you can see Ryan's spirits lift. One, two, three, three, two. One. I've got so much respect for Kiff. I realised that he was right, I was wrong. I've not been pulling my weight. I need to man up. It's probably the least attractive I look whilst on the island. <laughs> Jeez. No, no, even it works, trust me. <laughs> First sign of fish returning to the bay. There's one lone pelican here fishing. So our nets might hold something for breakfast, actually. The men now haven't eaten a solid meal for four days. From their one day of survival training, the men know the sea is their best hope of catching food. You got one sack? For the first time, Ryan has joined Kif, Saki and the others to help pull the nets in. Yeah, get it, get it. Ah! Look at that. You Beauty! Well, There's escape. a stingray in the net. He's out, he's out. Oh, shit. shit. Oh, a you weren't hungry enough, mate. You didn't have the hunger. I do now. I'm going to kill one of those fuckers before I leave. No, you're pissed hey, off. Uh, yes. For Saki, it's a bitter fail. Yay! But another net remains. Look at that, Piggy! Yeah, fish! The second net has delivered the men's biggest haul to date. Catching eight edible fish means vital protein to keep the group alive. Bear Grylls, <laughs> this survival programme is a piece of fish. <laughs> <laughs> However, the net has also brought in an unwelcome yeah, visitor. That. That's the deadly stonefish. Shit. So these spines here, you stand with these spines. Boom. Boom. It's not great. <laughs> OK. A stonefish has 13 large spines, and each one contains venom so deadly it can kill you within two hours. Beautiful in a strange kind of way. Now, that is a prehistoric fish. I didn't think we were going to see one of these, you know? Which one do you 
and you going for. Oh, I see the size of that going in there, Matt. Oh, man. <laughs> if we can get a net of fish like that every day, then I think I'm just going to uh, enjoy this opportunity whilst, whilst it's here. What a fabulous way to start the day. That was just a huge surprise this morning. With the bumper haul of eight fish cooking, all the men, apart from Ryan, are gathered by the fire. I, I don't like Ryan missing at morning briefings. I don't think it should happen. He should do his diary cam at another time. He should be here. It's no, important. I said no, it's yeah. not. It's not Selavi Fletch. He's yeah. vulnerable. No, it's not. Away from camp, Ryan is attempting to dispose of the stonefish. That fish is twitching quite a lot, and I'm starting to feel really bad. So I'm going to bash its head in. Just to be sure, because I don't want it to suffer. Always a shame to see a fellow stoner go. <laughs> right, Ryan was about burying the stonefish. Um, it was getting out of the way, so nobody stood on it. Um, it was a pretty important job to get out of the way, because it's a deadly fish. Obviously, didn't know we were having a meeting, so... He should be here. I'm making my point, Fletch. I've overruled you. Why can you overrule somebody yeah, by overruled shouting? You. I have nothing more to say. So we've got foraging. So is a, a team going up to the northwest coast? Today, uh, Ryan didn't come to the meeting, which to me was not on, and I made my point. I think day one, Ryan has been the one that's been at risk. He's injured himself. He's totally disorganised round the camp. Everybody's agreed that he's a liability. And I, I'm, I'm keeping it in. I'm, I'm biting my tongue, but. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan's doing a good job there. It's a job that needed doing. Yeah. And he was getting... And, and, and I'm not going to have that. It's bullying. Grandad's in a bit of a feisty mood today. Yeah. I just want to say, if he shouts at you... Don't worry. Don't worry. Right. Just don't walk away. Promise me you won't walk away, yeah? I won't walk away. Just, um, just take I've it all on. I've never stormed off. Oh, no, 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 I'm just saying, take it on your broad shoulders, yeah? If he, if he yeah. has a go at you, yeah? OK. Midday in camp. The men can finally feast on their first meal of fish. Thank you so much, mate. Some proper food. Mate, it's the best feeling in the world. Like, I don't know what it's like to have a baby because I don't have one, but I'd say it's better than birth. <laughs> can anybody tell me what fish it is? Sea fish. Sea fish. I like sea fish. Edible sea fish. Mm. Oh, my God. Is it good? What, mate? Oh, really good. Mm. Things are looking up. We had beautiful fish just now. Finally, the nets came good and we caught some fish and it's fucking great. It'd be nice to have a little kind of lemon sauce or something, but... <laughs> yeah. Oh, mate, <laughs> never, never, really. never happy. Thank you, Island. Thank you, Gilnet. I feel like a new man. Yeah. I feel like I'm back to myself. Every, every kind of... Oh, because a bit of fish. Imagine when we get back and we're eating burgers. We're going to be, like, off our head. So when we're all having our first burger or whatever we're all going to have, and we start to cry, we should bottle our tears because uh, you can sell your tears of joy on the internet. <laughs> have you ever bought tears on the internet? It's too expensive, to be honest. Yeah. Tears of joy are, like, 30 quid a pop. <laughs> are they? Yeah, that big. How big to pop? It is incredible what a difference to everybody's spirits one meal can make. <laughs> Ryan's sitting there holding court just talking rubbish, making everyone laugh. Absolutely brilliant. You get a certificate saying where <laughs> they came from and that. <laughs> Google it. Wow. Oh, it's incredible. That is beautiful. Looks like they're all flying home for something. Full from last night's meal, a different concern is now the talk of the camp. The trouble is, in a hot environment like desert or here, you sweat so much, your body tries to hold on to any water it can, so it's very easy to get constipated. Joe, how many days since you've been? Eight. <laughs> no, nine, nine days. Nine. You haven't had a crap for nine days? No, no. nine days. I've not had one for nine days either. Well, longest yeah. I've ever been in my life. But a new Ryan always, record. Always, always thought you were full of shit. <laughs> Can I point things out to you now while you're here? In the sleeping area, 
quartermaster Tony is on the warpath. Your hat is there. Yeah, Your belt is there. I know where the hat is. I know yeah. where the belt is. Everything's all over. No, it's not. OK. It's so always bollocks every five minutes. Boys. Tony all the time digging at people, pissing me off. There's no need for it. There's no fucking need for it. I don't, I don't know what his problem is. Tony, mate. Lay open, because he has turned a corner. He and hasn't turned the full corner. OK, but we're getting there. Yeah. And if you and, and things like that could, will send him back. Yeah, I've laid off now for a few days, but we are carrying him. Tony slightly has it in for Ryan, because I think he sees him as a bit of a hippy-dippy sort of soul. He needs to go to boot camp, but this is not boot camp island. This is about surviving. Truth is, this is so much harder than what I ever thought it was going to be. I'm just going to do everything in my power now to make sure that nobody feels like I'm not pulling my weight. For these guys, you glass of course, there will be an enduring sense of self-respect and pride. And it's easy to talk a good story, but ultimately, this isn't about talk, this is about action. So where are we going, Ryan? Going to Echo Beach, getting some snails. Determined to prove himself, Ryan heads out to forage for food. But this time, he's asked Saki to come with him. Is that an injured one, I see? One of them might be. The men are only ever one failed catch away from extreme hunger. Hey, Saki, hang on, hang on, hang on! Ryan has spotted something that might sustain the group a lot more than snails. He's injured. Wait, the poor guy. Um, some sort of seabird, I don't know. It's got beautiful green eyes. I want to I end this thing's misery ASAP, because it's, it's not even giving, giving me a fight. For animal lover Ryan, killing the cormorant humanely and quickly is of the utmost importance. It's a sad situation, but it's, it's the kindest thing to do, so if we're going to kill for our food, this is probably the, 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 the way that least makes me feel guilty. Right, I'm going to do it. Right, hang on. Just as hard as I can, yeah? As hard as you can. This is your moment of glory, mate. Mate, that's dead. I think that's a job well done, Ryan. He's gone from being a lazy no-hoper, really, to, you know, pulling his finger out and fully immersing himself in the activities of the group. And that's, that's, that's commendable on, on so many levels. What you got, Ryan? Nature provided us with a little extra. Did you kill it? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Nice one. Yeah. Well done. Well done. It's a beautiful creature as well. Bend it the way it's not meant to go. Ryan, for the first time, is providing the men with dinner. Yeah, so you get your fingers in there now, can you? And is prepping the bird under yeah. Farmer Joe's instructions. That's it. And what's that there, look? It's just a little heart. You've done a really good job, and. I think that's why we're all here, aren't we? To, you know, to do something that we wouldn't normally do at home. Are you, you going to eat it? Saki has dibs this one. Has he? Yeah, he wants some of the uh, power. I'm going to go and wash my hands, I think. Well done, Ryan. I killed it and I got the meat out and now I'm cooking it. That is one of the, my main goals, what I wanted to achieve coming to this island and I think I've... Uh, I've done it, so I'm uh, quite proud of myself, really, but... Yeah, wow. Thanks, buddy. But it's proper meat. It's bloody lovely. Well done, man. Thank you so much. Mmm. That's cormorant heart. Tastes oh. just like chicken liver. Yeah. Give us a hug. Look, you know my bit of sharpness and hardness? Yeah. Underneath here, look at me. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm as soft as a brush, you know. I don't know if I'm being paranoid, it just feels like treating me a bit different to no, Well, else. let's say perhaps I have done, and I sincerely apologise for that. Give us another hug. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Spirit and energy levels high, the men are gathered to mark another week spent on the island. Fire, fire! fire, fire. Under an emerging moon, Ryan has been given the sole responsibility of lighting the fire. Please stay lit. I was worried when I thought he might leave the islands. But he's really picks himself up and he's given himself a good kick in the arse and he's, yeah, he's behaving like a man. OK, nice, Ryan. 
I do think it's a culture, especially men, we see low moments as weak moments. And I think what happens when you're vulnerable with each other, you create strong bonds. And where there's strong bonds, there's strength in the team. Easy at home, isn't it? Yeah. You yeah. You've got to work for your shit here. I've already found out something about myself, is that I'm a prick. I'm a total prick. Definitely see this as a turning point, not just on the island, but in my life. It's not exactly the island of the super vixens. I'm in a dream world. What are you talking about? <laughs> my libido's not gone anywhere. First two nights, I had a boner. <laughs> what about you, Ryan? How's your libido? I had morning glory the first night, and after that, nothing. Getting a bit worried now. They're like per poking a marshmallow into a money box when you get home, mate. Right. Like every, every couple of days, I'm on the rock. I'm just going to look for some uh, way. I'm out there on Wang Rock. Yeah. Didn't find nothing. Go look for some snails. <laughs> Go look for some snails. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Next on the island, tensions in the camp are rising. The group is torn apart. I'm not bitching. Hey, grow up, don't walk away. I don't know who thinks he is, and you haven't got no fucking right to come and speak to me like that. This is dangerous, Fletch. Will it be survival of the fittest? I think we'll start sticking some of the fucking weaker ones on a raft and send them off to another <laughs> island. The guy's a cocksucker. Not allowing the group to spit should be of the utmost priority. There's no doubt that 21st century man has come a long way from our hunter-gatherer origins. Good morning, it's Ryan here calling today to book the annual service on the boiler. In Britain today, we take food, shelter and warmth for granted. And most of us consume rather than create. I want to find out what happens if you strip man of all the luxuries and the conveniences of modern living and then force them to fight for their very existence. 13 British men have been abandoned on a remote Pacific desert island. With just the clothes to stand up in and a few basic tools. And these guys are going to be completely alone. Oh my god, yes! Filming everything themselves. Okay, got him. <laughs> We've landed in the middle of an alien movie. When pushed to the extreme, okay. do they still have what it takes to survive? Who will become Lord of the Flies. You just wank a sign towards me. I think we'll start sticking some of the weaker ones on a raft and send them off to another <laughs> island. It's so important to look after each other and never, ever give up, even when it's all going wrong. Nice. One of them is going to say something. I'm going to let them f***ing have it. This is dangerous. Coming in, coming in, great! Two weeks ago, 13 British men were cast away on this remote Pacific island. Come on, nature, give us some food. They're alone, with no provisions and only a handful of basic tools. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Three of the men are trained and experienced cameramen. There's not a piece of gear that I couldn't pick up. Look at this, just sand all over it. But they are living under exactly the same conditions as everyone else. Don't like that. So far, they've had one big hunting success. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. Good on you, Ed. But now, they're living through famine. I would eat a scabby horse in between two piss-soaked mattresses. And frustrations... Stairs! I think it broke me hand. ...have reached boiling point. Why can you overrule somebody yeah, by overruled, shouting? Yeah. I have nothing more to say. The island has almost claimed its first victim. Ryan! Ryan! He's an idiot. How people die. <laughs> 13 people will not leave this island. Let's just see how shit goes down now. I feel like I'm living in like Epping Forest. In Epping Forest? Yeah. Do you get tarantulas in Epping Forest? No, but you get big Scorpions? No. No. Yeah. Bell constructors? No. Just a load of doggers. There's doggers. 
A lot of doggers. The men have now been scraping by on starvation rations for two weeks. We've decided to call this island Surely Island because, well, you know, we keep saying, surely there must be more fish. Surely there must be pigs. Surely there must be other things we can eat other than snails. Energy levels are at rock bottom. Today's been a struggle, just a physically, physically hard struggle to do the simplest things. We've got one fish that came out of the gill net on our beach this morning. Uh, I've got three portions left for team malnutrition. It's Tony, Dino. So the disappointment of not having enough carbs and food in general is kind of contributing to the mood in the camp. I'm so hungry now. <laughs> I'm so hungry. I want crisps galore. I want that cookie dough. I want <laughs> pizza. <laughs> I want hot dogs, sausage, bacon, eggs. I don't even like eggs. That's because you have to talk about food all day. You're torturing right. yourself. Just pass me a coconut shit. <laughs> <laughs> For me, survival is feast or famine. I think that's quickly becoming apparent. There's no steadiness to our food. Here you go, mate. Come on. Come on, just look. That's it, that's it. <laughs> mm. We've got no means of preserving the food that we catch. So when we get it, we have to eat it, and when we haven't got it, we're in a famine situation. How's that lovely coconut, bro? It's not hitting the spot. This is one of the most serious cases of hunger I've ever seen. It's extreme. I don't think it's going to end. I remember as part of our combat survival training in the military, one of the things I learned is actually just how hard work it is, the business of surviving. You know, all day you're, you're, you're working to collect water, find food, repair your camp, protect your fire, find firewood. You know, it's a constant process. And I think one of the key elements in a good survivor is a hard work ethic. We need Karen, mate. You might be right, mate. Because the fish aren't coming. They will bug it off. Rupert is determined to keep scouring the island for his toughest prey. Two weeks ago, I killed a caiman, and it fed all of us for, so I think, three meals. So it's um, definitely a food source worth chasing. We're ready to rock and roll. I'm on this one. Fuck it, man. Let's do it. I know these people are desperate to wrestle a caiman. I don't see the need of it, really. I think we can sustain ourselves on snails and things. This is so Caymanville. It's now a straightforward uh, find it, catch it, kill it, eat it. For Rupert, Mike and Chris, hunting in the mangrove swamps is using a huge amount of precious energy. I feel as if I'm climbing a mountain. It's just becoming more and more difficult. Short of breath, weak, legs feel as if they're not functioning. But uh, we need some food. We need some decent food. We've seen hide nor hair since that first one. Mind you, if we did find one, we'd be too knackered to catch him. Yeah. Well, oh, stop whinging, carry on. Whoop. Have this filled in no time. Yeah, it's easier in the street, have you? It's got to be about over 100 in there already. Nice and easy meal. Really easy. They're just everywhere. Saki, Ryan and Joe gather snails, the grim staple of the men's diet. They taste better every, every day. It's a shame they're only one calorie each. There's certain people who have an eye for foraging. You've got certain people who are better at physically catching things. Everybody who's here is able-bodied, but some just work harder than others. <sighs> Soz? I'm just so tired, babes. I'm so tired. The devil makes work for idle hands. You keep busy all day, you keep your nose clean, but, you know, if you don't keep busy, then it's gonna bite you in the backside. Just in the last two, three, four days, all I've seen with Craig is, is Craig lying around, and I think that's wrong. It's bloody hard, it's hard. You want to do so much, yet you haven't got the energy in order to do it. He's not pulling his weight. And at the moment, he's on, he's on a free ticket, you know. He's getting a free lunch every day.
literally like regressed to being like monkeys, so just scrabbling around on our hands and knees picking food. Crazy. After searching for hours, they've failed to find a caiman crocodile, but they have discovered a few wild figs. Oh, Worst. stood up. Ow. Oh, fainting. Fainting. <laughs> um, I assume it's dehydration. We'll get to those beaches, I think, and then round before tide changes and hits us. The men decide to return to camp, but they've been out so long, their way back through the mangrove has been cut off by the rising tide. They have to take an alternative route across a rocky coastline. In the afternoon, heat is at its zenith. Where are the figs? Good question. Where are the figs? It's a sign of how fucked up our brains have become and pick a whole bucket load on our hands and knees like monkeys and then wander off leaving the bucket there. No. That's just a quick shifty back, in it? Yeah. yeah. Go, go, go. Totally Chris's fault, though. I mean, he was carrying the buckets. Yeah. Six-year-old Chris returns for the figs, but it's a dangerous gamble. With the tide rising at a metre an hour, the route back to camp is rapidly becoming more difficult. Extreme hunger affects not only, obviously, your physical strength, but also your decision-making ability. Mate! And if there's doubt, don't take the risk. You'll only get it wrong once. Good to go, mate. I am finally good to go. Got the figs back, heading back to camp now. It's about an hour's walk. Not sure whether we're too late for this. Now approaching high tide, the beach has disappeared. Well, oh, oh shit. mate. You all right? Yeah. We all right. Rocks are lethal. This whiskey. That shit. It's a chasm of doom. The trouble with this route is we've got all these little gullies that just get worse and worse. Justifying jump. She's going to test you, isn't it, mate? I ain't doing that. No? Sure? Sure. 100%? 100%. No meal limits. Right, right, if you're not enough. sure, mate, don't do it. No. It's a broken leg or worse. So I'll go down and round. Hey, three, that bucket, mate. Ah, balls. Oh. Unwilling to risk the jump, Chris has no choice but to take his chances in the sea. Well, mate. And Mike follows. You know. Very tough, mate. Yeah. The currents on this stretch of shoreline can reach six knots powerful enough to pull even the stronger swimmer out to sea. Jumping the ravines, Rupert's made it ahead of the others. Chris! Brace! OK, and move. This is fucking dangerous, Fletch. That's it, mate. Quickly as we can. I'm really worried about this bit. Keep a really good hold, hold, hold. Let's go. Let's move. Yeah. Coming in, coming in, brace. Oh, God. OK, OK. And again. Happy chaps, right. and then gone through hell. That was pretty close to the edge. <laughs> well done, Chris. The exhausted hunting party returned to camp with only a few figs to show for their efforts. 
It's like it's been tough here at base. All right, Dino. What, right, babe? Having a tough day? Yeah. <laughs> Having a fiance day. How are you? We're good. What did you get? Figs. Ooh. Yeah. Poofy. There you go. <sighs> we uh, staggered back into the camp, and there is uh, Club 2130, all flat on the backs, storing the bloody heads on. People just sitting around doing fuck all, really. They're quite happy to sit back and let people work around them and provide for them. And it's like we're their mum or something. I don't really want to get involved in a massive argument, but it's coming to a little bit of a head, I think, slowly but surely. You can see little cracks starting to appear, and people are like, boom, boom. Like little, little comments here and there are coming out, and you're like, oh, judgy. Bit my tongue long enough. There's certain people that day after day, do absolutely nothing, and then come like little leeches with their bowls and don't even have the bloody decency to say thank you. And you just think, wow, your moles are as like, low as a snake's belly. This is the life here, guys. Well, I feel like a Kardashian is laying here. <laughs> this is jokes. I got a couple of sardines baking for dinner. It's mid-morning. The four youngest members of the group are sunbathing. One of the team there, and I won't say who, just said, I can't wait to get home to play my PlayStation. That is how different we are. I cannot comprehend why you would look down there and go, God, I wish, you, I wish I was in my mum's house. Yeah. You know, in my bedroom, playing on a PlayStation. But it's fucking moronic, isn't it? How are we doing, Taff? Not too bad. Are you coming to help, mate? Going for my daily exercise. Do you want to uh, tow this net out for us instead of walking? Maybe. I'm still trying to keep my foot dry. What, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Yes, it's not going to fall off, is it? I'm very, very pissed off. I've just been uh, stopped by Fletcher, who all of a sudden has become a bit of a... obviously become a doctor. He must have taken over from Sam, so... Um, asking me why I can't help with a gill net. Explained that they've uh, I've injured my foot. His reply was, what's the worst that could happen? The only thing that's wrong with his toe, his foot, is the lazy body that's attached to it. He says it's hurt his foot and can't go in the water, which... <laughs> I'm starting to lose sympathy and I think maybe it's actually laziness. Someone said to him, could you do water? And he's like, oh, I don't know, maybe. It's like, have some fucking pride in yourself. He's just idle. And if he stayed here, he'd slowly kill himself through idleness. Get off your lazy ass and do something. People take the piss like that. It's just an insult to the rest of us. I'm not going to be able to hold my tongue, I don't think. Do try, Rupert. I'll try, but it's difficult, Sam, sometimes. After weeks on the island, it isn't just the younger group members that Rupert has his differences with. Not much water left in that puddle, guys. Sam, me and him disagree on pretty much absolutely everything. He's uh, sort of sharing, caring, feeling, emotive, all that stuff. I think I'm a lot more hard-nosed in life than, than Sam, uh, a little less forgiving. 43-year-old Rupert lives in LA, where he moved to further his TV career. I'm kind of divorced and starting a new chapter, rediscovering who I am again after 10 years of marriage. I almost had this weird fantasy about being shipwrecked or being a castaway. Um, kind of Robinson Crusoe or the Lord of the Flies scenario kind of thing. And I guess it's because it's a, it's a, a way of challenging yourself and seeing what you're capable of. I'm kind of hoping I come out of this with a sort of zen calmness. Everyone else is working their asses off in the sun, sweating, uh, working all morning. Craig's over there having a nice little swim with Dean like they're in a blue lagoon having a romantic holiday. He's supposed to be on firewood today. I think he's done two small armfuls all day and the rest of the time just lying around. 
But I don't think that we should start talking about, you know, if mm. he's not going to pull his weight, he should go. No, no, no. We, you know, we, we came on here as 13 guys, we leave mm. as 13 guys, that's full stop. Right? But it's days and days of this now. It's just, every time you see him, he's lying on the ground doing nothing or asleep. I, I just, that winds me up. Sorry, I have to say something. Craig, have a word, mate. You don't notice everybody else is kind of working and sweating and all that. What have I you done today? I've just been down there, I'm on firewood. I've just been down there around the beach. And I, I know, I saw you walking there and come back, but you didn't come back with anything. Yeah, well, I'm trying to find firewood. There's a lot of firewood, mate. A walk down the beach and coming back with empty arms isn't really doing it, is it? Did you get some? I couldn't find any. You can't find actually. little sticks. Mate, come on, why are you here? Why are you here? I don't know, I asked my question now. I know. I said that quite a lot to go, so I know. I'm chucked off of it. I know. Well, don't, don't walk away. I want to talk to you. All we're asking is that you kind of make an effort to help with the group, and that's kind of just... I'm not seeing it. I know you've had injuries and stuff like that, that's fair enough, but you're walking around now, and I just want to be able to see... That's all you want to do is bitch, and that's all you I'm not do. bitching. Hey, grow up, don't walk away. Why are you here? Same reason you were here. I doubt it, because I seem to be doing a very different uh, time on this island than you are, so... I don't want a camera in my face. I don't know who the fuck he thinks he is. He's exactly the same as me on the island. I don't care what job he does. He's exactly the same as me on the island. And he ain't got no fucking right to come and speak to me like that. And I walked away from him because I, my temper rises very quickly. Let yeah. me tell him. Yeah. And it means, oh, it's, oh, that's how you deal with it. That's, that's a man way to do it. Fuck off. <laughs> No. No, I've had enough. I'm going. I'm going. Listen, don't be rash. Tomorrow I'm off to my wonderful land of wheels. Craig, don't do that, mate. Craig, mate, listen, buddy. We'd be devastated if that happened. Sorry, I'm not apologetic for it, but uh, I'm not. The clash between Rupert and Craig has affected the group. It's very easy to criticise other people. Very easy, you know? And, I, you know, I, I could easily criticise some of the guys that like to lie on the beach and sunbathe. And I could easily criticise the people that have a massive go at people, which is completely out of turn. I think both those things probably actually don't sit that well with me. But I just don't think that we should be sniping at each other and picking up on those things. It's because it's only happening because we're hungry, we're knackered, we're spending 24 hours a day in each other's company. And I can just feel the group falling apart. Because that's my biggest fear here, is that, you know, in this... At this point, when we've done so much, it starts to break up. And I, that would just be a disaster for me. Let's get this shit. The group has barely eaten anything in days. <sighs> I've ensured this island has enough water, animals and vegetation on it to keep the men alive. But only if they have the ingenuity to find it, catch it and kill it. It seems to go quite quiet inland. Not much life. Rupert and the hunters are scavenging the forest for anything to eat. We look. Yeah, maybe. Oh, we can get down to the beach here again. Rupert! Look, they got something. Woo! That is what you call a yucca. Yes! Solid carbs, oh, mate. Wow. Solid oh. carbs. Just one? No, oh, mate. The oh. forest over there to somewhere over here. Really? Yeah, mate. And they're just popping out the ground everywhere. There. Welcome to the yucca leaves. forest. Oh, oh wow. Leaves. That's the yucca right there. This baby here. The yucca has edible potato like roots. You wait till you get some good carbs in your belly. Very happy. Let's go and tell the boys. For maximum efficiency, really, you want to be getting about 60% of your energy from carbohydrates. And these yucca plants are actually some of the best carbohydrates known to man. The men's bodies will turn them into energy far more quickly than the protein that they've been eating. Wake up, you dozy bastards! Hang on, I just heard something coming up in the background. Hello! This, this sounds good. We got some for you. Anyone for carbohydrate? Wow! Oh my god! 
Welcome to your first yucca meal. Tonight, we eat like royalty. Oh, my God! Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, you beauty! If I don't get a drink of water, I am going to pass out. Run, get a stick, quick. Get a spear! Get a spear! Spear! Shit! Shit. Tangled in the fishing nets is another welcome discovery. Oh, Saki, what is it? Let's bring a whole lot in. It's a stingray! It's a big one. It's a big one. <sighs> Watch out for that done. stinger. He's done. Holy cow, that is massive. He's done. Shit. Fish and chip for dinner! Wow. <laughs> We're going to eat. The stingray is big enough to feed all 13 men. Wow, it totally lifted spirits just when they needed lifting. I think everyone was getting into survival slump, I guess. I think surviving in this environment is, is feast, feast and famine, you know, the waves of feast and famine, yeah? And today we're, we're having a feast. The promise of their first proper meal in weeks has brought a fragile peace to the camp. We don't have champagne, we don't have a DJ, but now it's party time! Oh, look at all that meat, man! They look a little bit like a haggis, don't they? A little bit. I've never had haggis. Ooh, it's yeah. nice. You should try Sheets. catching them, mate. They are so difficult to catch. What, a haggis? Yeah. yeah. But they've got one leg shorter than the other, so they're going to go on, go on mountains a lot easier. Really? Yeah, they're crazy. They're going to go one they're direction. Corner, yeah. Though, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got, you, you've got a clockwise and anti-clockwise one, and they're completely oh. different species. I've never seen a haggis. Yeah. Oh. Is there any haggis here? No, they only get them in the uh, Scottish Highlands. It's sort of purpley, aren't they? Fletcher? I'd say more mauve. Yeah, I was going to say mauve. Well, the animal's mauve. Like, it looks mm. brown, but then when you catch it in the sun, it's got like this glint. You know, like so it's like got some dogs, dogs can we, I guess. Yeah, essentially, it yeah. It's a hairdresser's dream. It really is. Yeah. Haggis is not an animal, is it? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> you lot of bastards. <laughs> Sizzler, look at that. Oh. Really good. Yeah, we, we finally got a meal with meat and veg. Sounds <laughs> good. It's literally what dreams are made of. After being deprived for weeks, the men are now experiencing a serious carb high. I'm in a happy place. Sam sees an opportunity for some team bonding. I'd like to do some kind of fun stuff as a group, like playing a game of rounders on the beach. I'd like to just hack away up there and build a little chill-out area where we can sit back and, and watch the sun go down. I'd like to make a big bit of beach art that has actually no practical purpose at all. <laughs> I really would love to see a leatherback turtle. I'd love that. We just had a meeting about where we're at, and I think there's kind of obviously two very different sides to the camp now. They want to build sculptures, they want to play rounders, and I know where my priorities lie. We're still at the basic hunter-gatherer stage, and we're living paycheck to paycheck. We haven't got tomorrow's food. It's out there in that sea, hopefully, stuck in the nets. If it isn't, we're fucked, so... As far as I'm really concerned, the rest are in cloud fucking cookie land. Both my grandfathers were miners. Obviously, they passed their digging skills on to me. Gotta love the Welsh. They do try. <laughs> the morning after their first meal of carb rich yucca, energy levels are high. Energy-wise, I feel like a new man out here. Um, yeah, I woke up this morning with a real spring in my step and a real purpose. Everything <laughs> changed this morning. We've got food coming in, we've got yucca, which is there. There's loads of it, it's gonna keep us going. It's a massive, massive breakthrough. Up to now, the group's all-consuming focus has been about food. But humans require much more than just food and water to survive. At what point do you try and move on from this hand-to-mouth existence and start trying to improve the quality of their lives? We've just found this amazing bit of driftwood. It's, uh, it's the sort of branches of a tree, so we can just hang our coconuts, all our, all our cups. I think it's a great idea. 
It looked quite good, wasn't it? I'm using the day to feather our nest. Um, just trying to make a few camp improvements, trying to get this place looking good. Sam. Let's go Sam, Sam. <laughs> Sam is, is the campus man on this island. And given that Dino is on the island, that, that takes some doing. Yeah, he's, he's the gay straight bloke I know. Oh, I think that's rather nice, that. Well done, Sam. It's all shaping up, isn't it? What do you think to the uh, the new pieces of furniture? Nice. Oh. Uh, Rupert turns his nose up at all sorts of things that I've done, you know, hat stand and coconut tree. All these things, for me, are part of creating an environment that we want to live in, that we're happy to live in. But for him, they're an, an unnecessary part of survival. Despite the big yucca find, Rupert continues to search for food at every opportunity. Ropes, bring machete. What do you got? What do you got? What do you think? Well, it's not pizza. <laughs> Oysters, no. Oysters, mate. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting sweating. I didn't come here to play house. With them. It's all very well making a camp look pretty and building little things to put mugs on and all that kind of stuff, which is great and it looks nice, but our priority should be finding food because I don't think we're out the woods yet. Fuck me! Huge! And it's like, I don't know, everyone's just kind of sort of crossing their fingers and hoping. And that's not really a way to survive. That's uh, gambling with your lives a bit. I mean, Sam's building a swing. Whee! No one's cooking. None of the other shit that he's doing around. It's just like, come on. With yucca supplies in camp running low, Rupert takes a team to harvest some more. Funny smell, there's a sweet smell around here, isn't it? Yeah, something's rotting a little something bit. Something is rotting. Yeah. Soft and squishy. Rotten. The harsh tropical environment has played a cruel trick on the men. Many of the tubers have rotted in the ground, and there's hardly any yucca left. Look at the state of that, mate. It's rotten. It's absolutely rotten. Minging. That is not edible. We've got one day of yucca left, so that's just gone bleak again. We ain't great. We're very short of food. We're out of yucca. I think it's kind of got to a slight I told you so point, but I never want to say I told you so, because that's uh, very annoying when people do that. But there's no food today. Is it all fucked? Because we're on an island, I'm going to try and save it. I was really shocked. We thought we would get we'd on top of the food. I think you know, it brought everyone back down to reality and made them realise that, OK, we need more food. I'm going to try and get as many pieces into everyone's bowl as possible so that everyone gets the same amount. Saki dishes up the very last of the yucca. I don't think we'll survive well if, without any carbohydrates. It's the one food that everybody gets a hell of a lot of energy out of the yucca, which really genuinely lifts everybody's spirit. It's just such a shame there's so little left. It's pretty obvious to me that we're running out of food. They've searched everywhere. We're running out of energy. We need food, and we need it for tonight. In camp, the men discuss the best way to feed the group. Do you think caiman is an important food source? It's a good source of protein. It's not fish and it tastes nice. For Rupert, hunting down an old enemy could replace the yucca and feed the camp. I think the caiman kind of catapulted us from sitting around eating snails and nothing to giving us a big energy boost to doing a whole load of stuff. So who's to say that couldn't happen again? It is not necessary for the survival of our community to kill caiman. Gillnets have provided, you know, more protein than, than many, many caimans combined. We might get two or three days of no fish. Could be on snails again every night. Who wants that? It's, it's, it's about stepping forward, isn't it? And stepping upwards and moving on. Trying to find one of these prehistoric toothed beasts that could uh, rip off your arm and maybe catch one and return a hero has become a little bit of an obsession. What do you reckon, Kip? I think you're full of shit. I should be, we should be hunting those pink elephants. They're the ones that are bugging me. <laughs> Realities are still very much kind of living hand to mouth, and there's no guaranteed food source that they can always rely on. But my view is the real enemy is actually the disunity in the camp. Do it. Despite the differences of opinion, Rupert sets out once more 
to hunt for Cayman crocodile. And I am joining Fletch and CB on the search for more food. Each time a group heads to the mangroves, it takes up two or three men. Um, it takes up a huge amount of energy, it takes up water, uh, and it takes up time. Those resources could be used far better. You know, we could catch fish, we could knock down coconuts, we could pick snails, all the sort of stuff that's easily available on this island. Basaki and his team of snail gatherers think the answer to feeding the group lies on the rocky shoreline. Snail gathering has probably been one of the most important jobs we've had since we've been on the island. Yeah, I completely agree. When times get hard, you've got to knuckle down and make sure that you have the bare necessities. The glory of the caiman hunt or the full belly of the snails, I choose the full belly of the snails. I just love the adventure and trekking through the jungle, hacking away. It's the nature of, of being here and surviving. Ah, it's muddy! That's really muddy. Ah, <laughs> oh, bollocks. This is a stupid plan. This is where the food is, gentlemen. Oh, to get the food, we have to come in here. Look at that. That's unbelievable, isn't it? All uh, right, onwards. Snackery. <laughs> stuck in the mud and the problem with this is that we're moving about 0.1 miles an hour and the caiman can probably skitter across this stuff in about 20 miles an hour so right now they have us at uh, quite a considerable advantage Rupert's just an egotistical alpha male wannabe I'd say he's constantly imposing himself upon the smaller people that he deems aren't as valuable as he is he wants to be Rambo let him play Rambo but that's pointless. That's, that's detrimental to the group. Success? Oysters and figs. But oysters and figs are not enough for Rupert. He's got a new idea. We're going to go Cayman hunting at night, because the only way I think we're going to catch them now. Night uh, is when they hunt. That's their element. The danger side of it goes up considerably by doing that. But it's a risk, I think, that's worth taking. Tonight, Saki, me and Dan are going out in the swamps to find Cayman. It's not going to work. Pipe dream. It's yeah. not a pipe dream. No, no, I don't think it is. No, I really fucking caught one, so... I'm just going to say that I've opted out of Cayman hunting. I'm heading there tonight. There you go. That's sorted, then. I've already been there, done that, so to speak, and I've got plans with these guys to do various things. Saki suddenly announced I'm no longer anything to do with the so-called Cayman hunting, which, um... Uh, I don't know, struck me as kind of somewhat arrogant. He didn't seem to have the balls to talk to me personally and say he wasn't going to do it and come and do it. I don't know why he doesn't want to do it. He hasn't said, he hasn't spoken to me since, to be honest, and I haven't spoken to him. Look out below. Bringing in all the foods on a day-to-day -day basis, that's far more important than a cayman that you can't even see. They haven't seen one. And yet they're still pursuing it, because they're, they're glory hunting. I just hope uh, I don't come across as too kind of crazed uh, loner. But long term, I think they'd probably agree with me when they're starving. So uh, I think I'd uh, like to feel I'm still right. This time, along with Chris and Mike, someone else is up for the thrill of the hunt. Just about to get ready now to go out into the mangrove for a bit of night came and hunting. Um, some of the guys were going, and uh, I just thought it sounded too exciting to pass out. Well right then, let's go. See you later. See you later, second. Good luck, boys. See you later, man. I am excited by the prospect of nighttime came and hunting, like any red blooded male. But uh, it seems like a bit of an insane expedition, really. Oh, oh shit. In the tidal mangrove swamps at night, the Cayman crocodiles themselves will be hunting their prey. My concern is that uh, we don't stand a chance in the water with Because we can't wrestle it in wasting water. It's just crazy. We're just slowly making our way through the mangrove swamp, looking to see whether we can see the reflection of any Cayman in their torches. 
nothing so far, but we can hear movement inside the macro all the time. Everywhere we go, there's just little sounds, little rustling noises, little slaps in the water. It's really, really spooky. Look at that. Something quite big just shot past my feet. Look, 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 look. it's Kim, Kim. Yeah, it's Kim. Rupert and the men are on a dangerous night hunt for caiman crocodile in the pitch black mangroves. Well, there's something I can hear it. Whoa! A lot of funny noises. There is, isn't there? It's pretty eerie. There's a lot of splashes going on. Wow! Oh, oh jeez. <laughs> Have you got him down? Yeah. What was it? Huge bat. Huge bat. The trail's gone cold. Everyone good to carry on? On this week's episode of the Clueless Cayman Hunters, the Clueless Cayman Hunters decide to go into a mangrove swamp, attempting to catch a crocodile with their bare hands. Stay tuned to see how we get their leg bit now. After an hour of fruitless searching, some of the hunting party are starting to have their doubts. Clueless Cayman hunters. <laughs> None of us have got a clue, have we? No. <laughs> no. So that's the whole point of this trip, is just maybe try and work out. The thing is, we've we got a doctor, a director, a <laughs> businessman, and an IT guy. <laughs> Collectively, <laughs> we still know nothing. Yeah. You see, that is the intrepid British spirit. Yeah. yeah. Is there likely to be one on this peninsula? There will be one uh, 30 clicks in that direction. <laughs> 30 clicks? <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's like a tropic thunder. Yeah. Should we have a cup of tea? Here's the phone. But I still have hope, and uh, you never know. Mm. But we got one, mm. something. Yeah. Whilst we're stood here having this conversation, they're all kind of out there playing cards, smoking cigars, and yeah. drinking whiskey. Yeah, and, um, they, 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 here come those idiot British guys again. Yeah. They killed old Jack the other day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jack lame God. Jack. Yeah, lame Jack. <laughs> okay. Dreams of another Cayman crocodile dashed. The men head back to camp. Wow, check this out. Very fresh. Big. Big old turtle track. Dan! Dan! What? Dan, he's here. You serious? You can see him over there. Yeah, no, he's digging in there. Come, come here, see. come here, come look. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh my god, it's huge. Wow. Beautiful thing. The endangered green sea turtle has come onto the island to lay her eggs. A very rare. So special. That's phenomenal. Just a huge, huge privilege to see this. Wow. Speechless. The lion was desperate to see these. It's food for the soul, is that, mate? It's food for the soul. Ryan's going to be gutted. Oh, mate, he is. I almost think we should not tell him. You don't get your ass out of camp, you don't go and see shit. Don't forget it. Mate, that was... That was awesome. And we're not allowed to eat those, right? <laughs> After the failed night hunt, most of the group are now convinced that pursuing crocodile is a waste of time and energy. It's nice to have an audience when you work. And for all the naysayers, I think, oh, it's pointless and all that. Um, if you don't try, you don't succeed. And uh, they're obviously trying very hard just to sit around the camp and do nothing. Um, and they're succeeding at that. They're doing very well at that, in fact. What are the chances of a lovely cup of tea? News of last night's turtle sighting has spread. <laughs> Mate, I tell you what, it was a big turtle. 
beautiful thing. Mate, I couldn't give a shit. I'll Google it. Nah. Google it. <laughs> I'll happily Google a silverback turtle. Like, I would rather sleep. I've not slept in three days to be woken up about a turtle, man. I can't believe. I've been saying since day one, I'm seeing the turtles was the most important thing to me about this trip. I said, if I see one of them, I will die happy. Five guys got three metres away from them and didn't come back and get me. Genuinely, mate, I remember thinking, oh, Ryan would love to see this. But, you know, we were just worried that we'd disturb it too much and, you know, we didn't want to go and wake people up. Those are the reasons, mate. I know you can spend a lifetime trying to see those and fail. Fuck off. I will never forgive any of you, right? I was a little bit naughty, uh, I have to admit, a confession. I couldn't quite help myself. I innocently started talking about how wonderful the turtle was. Well, Ryan, if you're going to sit there in meetings and call us going out at night and do all that kind of stuff, a pointless exercise and uh, a waste of time and a pipe dream, then why the fuck should we come and get you? You never believe what that arsehole just said to me. Who? Rupert. And he's like, oh, that turtle was so amazing last night. I can't believe it. You can spend your whole life looking for them and fail. The guy's a fucking yeah, He used to Ryan, Ryan. Fucking fuck! Ryan, Ryan. I shouldn't have to worry about childish reactions from people like that, should I? He missed out. Tough shit. Um, I have very little sympathy for him on this one. He needs to grow up or fuck off. <laughs> Rupert, all his negativity that he's expressed over the last couple of days, attacking Craig, he's really attacking Ryan. <laughs> You know, taking rather than being childish, when actually doing childish things himself, just things that are completely unhelpful. I really hope these guys can come together and build an effective team, but the reality is, when you're tired and you're hungry, the more primal side of us comes out, then you learn what people are really like. It's either all or nothing with Rupert. It's either his way or no way. I would say the group has outgrown Rupert. The human side of it's starting to kind of just bear down a little bit on me. Um, if I could get rid of half the people here, then it would be a lot better. I don't understand. Why, why, be, why be so difficult? It's, it's an age thing, mate. It must be an age thing. Or, or hang-ups that he's got. He, he has to be right all the time. He has, his word is final. So it's to pick on people that he thinks are not going to argue. What's the pick point? For all of the fact that we've um, been together as a tribe and we've collaborated, my prediction is that if we had to stay for longer, the group would actually split in half. Yeah, and then it'd be um, interesting to see how half of them actually fed themselves when the people that actually get all the food yeah. decided just to look after themselves. Of like, actually, if you're not looking for it and not contributing towards that, why should you get any? Um, I think we'd start sticking some of the fucking weaker ones on a raft and send them off to another <laughs> island. I, I, th I find it a little unfortunate that you, you see the world like that. It, it will become Lord of the Flies, and they end up killing the rest of them. Um, uh, and they finally get rescued, but it, it, humans then go back to their fucking savage past, and you know, when it comes to desperation and hunger, um, it will get nasty. Next on the island... What did you just do a wanker sign towards me? Fuck you! As the end approaches... The meeting's not over yet, you dickhead. Tensions rise. You're just full of bullshit. I can't be bothered to fucking argue you anymore. They don't take the piss. Somebody makes it easy to take the piss. Why not take the piss? Ugh. The guys are still physically declining. Oh, my lord. The pipe of justice. Something is going to have to change if they're going to stay the course. Welcome to the first Shirley Island election. No doubt that 21st century man has come a long way from our hunter-gatherer origins. Good morning, it's Ryan here to book the annual service on the boiler. In Britain today, we take food, shelter and warmth for granted. And most of us consume rather than create. I want to find out what happens if you strip man of all the luxuries and the conveniences of modern living and then force them to fight for their very existence. 
13 British men have been abandoned on a remote Pacific desert island. With just a clothes to stand up in and a few basic tools. These guys are completely alone, filming everything themselves. Okay, got him. This isn't about talk, this is about action. If you think you can do it, prove it. One wrong move, and this place will take you down. When pushed to the extreme, do they still have what it takes to survive? Can't believe right, it! Right. This is dangerous. Coming in, coming in, brace! Three weeks ago, 13 British men were cast away on this remote Pacific island. Get a foot on. They're alone, with no provisions and only a handful of basic tools. So we've got three knives. Three knives, three machetes. Yeah. That's it. Three of the men are trained and experienced cameramen. Can I pass the camera up to you? But they are living under exactly the same conditions as everyone else. <laughs> So far, these 13 British guys have survived for three weeks totally alone on this desert island. You know, that's no mean feat. But they're now divided on how to find food. Tonight, Saki, me and Dan are going out to find Cayman. I've opted out of Cayman hunting. Without unity... There's a lot of people just sitting around doing f all, really. ..and no clear sense of direction, the men are sabotaging their own chances of survival. If you're not looking for food, why should you get any? Mate, come on, why are you here? It will become Lord of the Flies. And then we start sticking some of the weaker ones on a raft and send them off to another <laughs> island. Hey, grow up, don't walk away. I actually think that the hardest part of survival, harder than finding the food, is keeping everybody together. <sighs> I'm so hungry now. The truth is, if they don't start working together, looking after each other, thinking smart, being resourceful and surviving, they haven't got a cat's chance of making it at the end of this month. Good morning, it's uh, Saturday the 22nd of February. Just another clear sky, sun just rising. We're running out of food. We're running out of energy. We're running out of drive. One of the guys even suggested, I mean, this horrified me, that we're thriving. He really needed dipping his head in the Pacific, and I would have done it a few years ago. I've ensured this island has enough water, animals and vegetation on it to keep the men alive, but only if they have the ingenuity to find it, catch it and kill it. What's the catch, mate? Nothing, mate. Nothing? No. Ah! The fish catch was sucked, it was shit. Yeah. So we still have to focus on getting food for today. Now in their fourth week, the group is fractured and food is scarce as a result. Oysters are almost out. Fish, fish is, uh, comes in, comes out, feast or famine. Uh, we have got no carbohydrate left on the island that we know of. You, OK, so are we really doing more slogs round the island? Or die. It's quite interesting what's happened in the last few days because the group is beginning to split, essentially. It's incredible. We're just not eating enough. <laughs> We're just not eating enough. Whatever shape, form or fashion it takes, we need someone to focus our group of 13 men. Now the dwindling supplies of food are seeing the men's bodies begin to shut down. I'm not even kidding. My experience of the toilet this morning was like trying to squeeze a watermelon through a straw, which is becoming a little bit more of a common occurrence and one that I'm not particularly enjoying. It's the diet we're eating, it's the lack of fibre, lack of fruit, it's the dehydration which just sucks moisture out of everything in your body. And some people are really, really suffering. When I go to the toilet, water comes out first, and then what I can only describe as dried-up hay that is way too big to actually 
the size of my bum hole. What you've got is a very severe constipation. Impacted stool with overflow diarrhoea. It's the dehydration which is just sucking moisture out of everything that it can inside the body. You've had the same. Well, I've, and I've... He, Sam had to use Sam had to use a stick to, to what prize his out like a shoehorn. Well, thanks for sharing the stick. Right. The stick piece of information is true. You what do we do about it? Out. We don't have any laxatives. We've tried the natural laxatives. We haven't got that many figs we're running out. We've tried having several coconuts a day. So the only thing that I can think of left is the pipe of justice. Using a water bottle and pipe they found washed up on the beach, <laughs> Dr. Sam has fashioned an enema kit. So I'll just, I'll just lay on the floor, I'll stick the pipe up the bum, and then Sam just squeezes the liquid in, I suppose. Oh, my, hang on. Jeez, that is not easy to get out. I'll hold it. You ready? Yeah. That feels weird. Yeah. All right, now, so gently push in, OK? Oh, my Lord! Whoa! Flippin' heck, that is really weird! Put it on tight so it doesn't all come out. Ah! Oh, oh my... Good Lord. I try and hold it up there for a bit. Okay. Some of it will be absorbed, some of it will hopefully just soften that stool up and then, right. and then go and get it out. It's definitely done something. What it's done, I don't know. While Dan waits for the enema to take effect... Fish. It's every man for himself in their quest to find breakfast. I want to get it quick, aren't they? I mean, the thing is, we're out of coconuts. We've reached pretty much all the low-reaching ones that we can get with sticks and bashing. So what I'm going to do is just work my way up. This goes around you, so you can kind of lean back on the tree, that kind of thing. I'm having to use my strong sphincter control to hold that water up my bum. Extreme hunger affects not only, obviously, your physical strength, but also your decision-making ability. Gun rain. And it can become this vicious downward spiral where you get weaker, you get less strength, you make less good decisions. I've got to go, mate. And therefore, your hunting abilities plummet. Oh, oh my goodness. Worked amazingly. Yeah. Some energy, I'm massively lacking energy. My muscles and my legs, my arms just feel dead. We are starving. We really need to focus or come up with a way of getting more food for the group because uh, I don't think we're doing that great. And it's affected the mood in the camp. People are just so lethargic. People just do me that in. There's not enough communication. There's certain people in the group who will just do something for themselves. And now, all of a sudden, I feel hungry, and I mean painfully hungry. I can't think straight. Stingray! 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 That's it. I'm just going to do one, two, three, and I'm going to bring him out, OK? Yeah, go on. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, OK, all right, all right, OK, OK, I've got it. OK, I've got it, I've got it. With the group hungry and fragmented, a fresh catch is a lifeline for the men. Animal lover Ryan has spotted the killing on his camera. They just caught a stingray. They didn't kill it straight away like they should have done. We get fish in our gill net. Bang on. Amazing. What could go wrong? What the fuck is he doing? The quickest way to kill a stingray is to drive a sharp knife between its eyes. Are there any other knives in the camp? You just can't find any knives anywhere. What are you doing? Will somebody please put it out of its misery. OK, we'll grab a knife. Come on, stab it in its head, man. OK, wait, well, look, it's just come to get a rock get a and, a, and a knife. Calm down. Calm down. 
fuck say? Hey, 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 stop. Right, you need to grab a hold of yourself. Man. That's it. That was horrific. Stop for a second and just breathe. This isn't about you, mate. I, I know it's not about me. It's about that stingray so, suffering. But I he's trying to explain to you. We haven't got a he's, knife. Exactly. With they didn't have the one. Why? Well, well, I'm running down the beach. Point that fucking machete in the face. I'm down the beach ten times. Right. I think you need to go away and take ten minutes. What are you sniggering at? What, what did you just fucking do? A wanker sign towards me? Fuck you. Well, I know you got half of that. What was going on, mate? Talk to me, right? You fucking made a right meal of killing that stingray. Why are you pointing yeah. at me? Why would I'm I do pointing that? pointing the big Tony finger at you. Then you got Rupert walking past, fucking doing wanker sign at me. Yeah, that was out of order. Doing a wanker sign. It doesn't help, I know. Stick. Yeah. You are not finding the physical side of this difficult. The side that you find difficult is dealing with people like him yeah, yeah. without losing your shit, without putting him a wanker, without driving him off into the jungle if we were indefinitely to die and starve on his own as a lonely man. Yeah, that is, that's the challenge for you. That's the personal challenge for you. It really doesn't take much for groups to split apart. You know, it's often small differences make great chasms. But now things have got so bad, even a fresh food catch can't heal the group. It wouldn't have really mattered whether it was a stingray in the net or a UFO landing on the on the island. I think the point is that tensions are now running high. We're, we're a ship without a rudder, and we need someone to grab that rudder and get this camp in good working order. We desperately need a leader now. In the wild, when people are under pressure and your life is on the line, you've got to do all you can to keep a group cohesive and together. Tony, I'd like to call a meeting in 15 minutes. Because when it's together, it's strong. It's not strong when it's fragmented and broken. I'd like to call a meeting. I'm here. 43 year old director Matt lives with his partner and daughter in East London and has some experience of filming in hostile environments. This is conflict every day, and it's Lord of the Flies, essentially. There's a risk of not working together as a cohesive team. That's, that's the nightmare situation. What I'd like to think is that we're all pretty sensible and we all get on with it and we all, you know, we all thrive in the environment and, and really make something good happen. There's just something on my mind I wanted to sort of share with you. I think it's no secret that there are fracture lines appearing within our group. That's no secret. We could think about electing a leader, someone who can, you know, bring unity to all of us. I At think we're moment, too late into this to suddenly come up yeah. with a whole new structure which is going to Well, I disagree, with really, but I, I, I yeah. sort of believe in seizing the moment, and I think this is the moment no, to I seize think it. it's way too late. Like, I think well, this is the time to yeah. seize the moment, and, you well, know, if I we're going to let this moment pass, then, then I think we're all doing ourselves a disservice. If a leader is elected, mm -hmm. it will be a leader's job to make sure that everyone is doing the things they've undertaken to do. I fully understand why you're saying it, because I agree that we are kind of drifting, I mean, I agree we need to go out and do stuff, but that's down to your personal responsibility and commitment to this project on every single person. I think a leader's a really bad idea. It's not like we all have to be, like, all hail to the leader and be scared of him or anything like that. But that's a not, team what, we're leader. But that's no, not what we've been finished. told to do, though. Finish, please, yeah. But... So, um... It's an argument, Dan. People interject. I know, but you, you don't... The way no, that the conversation finish, goes is one person yeah. says something and the other person says something. It goes like that, one backwards and forwards, rather than speak over the top. Matt also proposes the elected leader organises a party to unite the group. To stitch those fracture lines together and come back together again as a group of 13. We could just say we have a project, and that is the sorting out of our camp and the preparation for a celebration. So uh, would, it, would it be a better comment to say we're electing a project manager rather than a leader? If you want to call it a project manager and someone's in charge of building up for the celebrations, fine. If that's something we should all vote upon rather than voting for a leader, then maybe that's the way forward. I will second uh, I your proposal. Thank I'll you, Tony. I will second your proposal. Shall we put it to a vote, gentlemen? Uh, those in favour, put your arms in the air, please. <laughs> Pretty unanimous. That's fantastic, guys. Can I suggest that those who want to put their names forward as a candidate do so now? Chris, thanks, CB. CB. Sam, hat in the ring. Like. 
I'll go for it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna put my net forward as well. Excellent. Just to throw something in there. Yeah. Come on. Oh, Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Bruce, put yourself up for leadership. Hmm? I don't want to be a leader. I didn't come here to be a leader. So it sounds like it. No, I don't think that we need one. I think we just need a bit more sense of personal responsibility for everybody to get us through to the end now. So, just had a very interesting meeting about appointing a... Well, originally it started as a leader, but I think Rupert's very uncomfortable with that term. But essentially, it is a leader, but we've called it a project manager. How did you think the meeting went? Um... Rupert was very opposed to being uh, their, for, to there being a leader, having assumed that role himself for most of the last three weeks. Across the island, four of the men are preparing for their first election. Let's go through the candidates. So we've got Zaki, Doc Sam, Fletch, and Chris Burrows. Let me deal with Chris Burrows. I'm not too sure about his team leadership skills. CB definitely has the skills. He has a vision and he's very humane. And I won't be voting for him. Zaki, uh, observe Zaki, and I think Zaki will be a good project leader, manager. We're playing with words between leader and manager. Who are you voting for? Who are you voting for? I'm going to, I'm going to wait until I hear their manifestos. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Voter. He certainly is a floating voter at the moment. moment. Sam has been tirelessly enthusiastic. But he can't actually say to people, come on, mate. It's about motivation. It's not about telling people what to do. It's about motivating them to do it. We then come to Mike Fletcher. I think Fletcher would be brilliant, I said, because he's decisive, he's hard-working, he's practical. Mike Fletcher and I don't get on. Mike Fletcher, you're not a leader. You're just full of bullshit. So, Rupert, what are you up to, mate? Looking for small round voting tokens for the upcoming somewhat pointless election. <laughs> you, think it's, you think it's pointless? For the last two and a half weeks, you virtually did become the leader, Rupert. Yeah, I, like, uh, I don't know. I, mean, I guess maybe I don't think that actually needs to be kind of elected for that to work. I think kind of leadership mm. comes naturally in a way. I think electing somebody is, is difficult. I'm glad you don't want to be the leader. He's a control freak. He thinks he knows best all the time. He's just basically an arsehole. Right, everyone, welcome to the first Shirley Island election. One by one, the candidates outline their vision for a united, efficient camp. Right. So we're all supposed to come up with a manifesto about how we're going to run this project. I don't have a manifesto. I have a work ethic. Everybody around the room has got a vision. I would go around everybody individually and speak to them one-on-one -on -one what they would like to do. We need to share the same idea. Our ideas need to be collective. I'm not here to bark orders at people. All I'm asking, you give of your best. Everybody should be able to look each other in the eye, shake hands and say, we may have had our differences, but I respect you. The only thing I would do would be to facilitate the smoother running and efficiency of this camp so that over there by that bonfire, we have 13 torches, we light that fire, we sing at the top of our voices and we leave with our hands held motherfucking high. Yeah. Yeah. That was powerful, man. All four men have made their pleas, but there's a last-minute candidate. Right. 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 Let's go for it, Ryan. Yep. The people who stepped forward, I honestly looked and I thought, you know what, I can do a better job than they can. So I've stepped up. Hi, right, everyone, I know. People might think it's a bit of a joke, a bit of a joke candidate, but uh, I really do think this is my time to shine. Um, basically, I don't really like to be organised, but the thing is, when I want to be, I can be very hyper-organised. And I'd like the chance to prove to you all that I'm not a complete tosser and that I could do it and I could make a good job. Very, very good. That's great, man. Well done. Thank you.
Each candidate has um, his own token. So, for example, Saki has almonds, uh, Ryan has snails, Sam has shells, Fletch has uh, inedible nuts, and CB has um, a nice, delicate piece of palm leaf. Each member of the group must now vote, placing their chosen token in the coconut ballot box. I'm really excited. I'm very excited. Shall I get the coconut? <laughs> Release the coconut. Release the coconut. It's Here like the national lottery on a Saturday night, isn't it? Here we go. In wilderness situations, when everything is on the line, you really see what matters in a leader. And if the men are to survive the rest of their time on the island, electing the right leader could make all the difference. Matt is the official returning officer. Whoever does win this, I think it's really important that we all get behind them. You know, even if it's not our favourite candidate and stuff like that. Well said, Cliff. Well said. And the winner is... Ah. That is a clear oh, winner. Yeah. Saki! I hope that I make you all proud at the end of this fucking journey. And we can all say that we came, we saw, and we conquered. Well said. Well said, mate. Yeah. Thank you. Saki absolutely cleaned up. He got seven votes, and the rest of us got six to share between us. So I'm really, really pleased. And I think he bridges that gap between the, the two groups that are splintering off a little bit. Um, he's, he's pally with the younger lot, but he's also got the respect of the older contingent. Um, so I think it'd be really good to bring everyone together. <laughs> a leader serves, essentially. It's not there to kind of sit on the throne, it's there to serve people. And I remember always being told that nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. And, and for a leader, that is critical, that people know you care for them. It looked at times as if our group wasn't even going to agree on, on having a leader. But let's make no mistake, we do have a leader. We don't have a project manager. We have a leader for the 13 men on Shirley Island, and his name is Saki. Morning. Good morning. 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 Right. To business, I suppose. It's Saki's first day as leader. We need to gather the food. To improve their chances of survival, he's delegating tasks to the men so they can find food more efficiently. I'd like to stay on oysters. How many people would you need with you to just, do that? Just one other person. Who wants to do oysters with Rupert? Yeah. I'm happy to do oysters. I think we were all in agreement, speaking to everybody last night, that the first two courses of action should be to get the water and the firewood sorted. Can and I suggest we get the nets in first? Just let those fish sit in there. It won't take long, we just pull them in, get them out, it's like 20 minutes, but... It won't take long for the firewood either. I say we go with the firewoods. Who it's just would like to fish help? on a on a line? That's all. Yeah, I understand yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. No. But if we take twenty minutes to do the firewood, mm -hmm. it's not really going to compromise the fish. And another thing I need to say is, everybody has siesta time. During that time, you can do whatever the fuck you like. You can sleep, you can sunbathe, you can wank, That's... you can <laughs> do whatever you like. I just make a point. Your job's project manager at Siesta Time kind of doesn't fall under that. Yeah, but this is just reassurance, mate. Yeah, no. Good. I'm just reassuring yeah, people because everybody was hang on, everybody was worried about this what before. What your role is, yeah. Everyone was worried about the leader saying, no, you have to do this at any time and blah, blah, blah. What I'm Not saying, is, all I'm saying is mm. that Siesta Time is still your time. Rupert really struggling with uh, having the leader. Everybody else completely on board. We elected a project manager yeah. not to dictate rules like what's happening, uh, siesta time and all that kind of thing. Yeah, well, I'm not, I'm not dictating the rules. No, I know, I know. I'm just we're covering stuff that's not perhaps we'll under your... We'll get to there, don't yeah. worry. OK. By the way, Rupert, these aren't my ideas. No, no, I know. I know, but I'm just, that was the election. Yeah, but about wait, let me, let me finish. Yeah, that's all. These aren't my ideas. This is what everyone has put to me. No, no, that's okay. all I, I just I, sounded like on, it came from you. Yeah, that just sounded like let it came from you. So, that's fine then. I asked everybody what they wanted done. I'm just doing what, exactly what I said in my manifesto, I'm trying to facilitate the will of the group. And everybody asked me about siestas, so I'm just saying, do whatever you like with it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you're saying. Right, so we're done now, boys. We're done. Yeah. We're done. Good job, Saki. Well done, Saki. Well done, mate.
<laughs> He's a douche. I don't understand what he was trying to achieve there. He kind of cut me off and was like, uh, I thought the project manager was supposed to do this, this, and this. And I'm like, hang on, hang on. I haven't got there yet. The meeting's not over yet, you dickhead. As well as coordinating each day's workload, Saki is organising an upcoming beach party to increase unity in the group. As far as I was concerned, we elected a sort of party planner. I just felt it kind of was going a bit beyond all that. It was decisions that were more group things, but I can't be bothered to fucking argue anymore. We very clearly elected somebody as a project manager for the party, which is basically organising a party, party planning, and getting a bit of food to go. We had a very clear discussion on that we weren't voting for a leader, but that would still remain within the group. So if we start giving Saki that position of doing that, that's then we're saying he's leader, and that's what we didn't do. So I'm very clear on it, and I'm very adamant. I think you're the only person that believes that he should really literally stick to that one focus of party planning and not mm. start to actually coordinate the other things. I, I have an issue on... The, it's a very simple point. That, that, that there is a leader before we had mm. uh, Saki in place. You did feel that um, morning meetings were important. In fact, you were adamant that we no, had No, no, I agree. And, in fact, you tended to lead them. You know, you said you, you enjoyed that role, you took that role on. We had a chat right at the beginning. Mm. And so you were effectively a self-appointed leader. It's just now that we have a democratically true. elected no. leader, mm. you, you're very resistant to it. Brian? Yeah? Joe! Dino! Saki has called some of the men together as a chance sighting by Ryan could lead them to a food source rich in energy. Uh, me and Joe went on a fig run. On the way we saw some bees. The men are heading to the spot where Ryan saw some bees close to where they first set up camp almost a month ago in the hope of discovering honey. Prospect of honey. Gives me a boner. Do you know? Ryan told us he found bees. Nobody else believed him. We walked through the jungle in order to regain some respect from some of the members of this group who just clearly disregard him at every opportunity. Four people have gone looking for honey. I know. It's like I bang on the drum, sound the war drums against complacency, and four of them go for a stroll, look for honey, and now we've got no food. Does anyone know what they're looking for here? I, I thought I heard buzzing. But... I can hear buzzing. I can hear like a deep drone, actually. Yeah. Hey guys, come here. Look at this. It's got bees on it galore. Very good spot, Ryan. Holy. Fuckeroni. This is it, guys. We have found a beehive. Ryan, you are a legend, mate. There's no guarantee the men will find honey in the hive, but having been starved of sugar for almost a month, they are willing to take the risk. And now it's honey time. For three hours to get it and come back. And hopefully get ourselves some honey. And maybe finally Ryan and Rupert can put their demons to bed. And we can take him seriously. The men have returned to camp, grabbing whatever tools they can find to get to the beehive within the tree trunk. I've got the hot embers of our fire, which is going oh, to smoke out the bees. I've got everyone's clothes. Several species of bees inhabit this island. And if the men encounter the Africanized bee, its sting can kill. Right, straight away, clear the area. Machetes out, clear away all the dry leaves and shit. I've never been so focused about anything on this trip as this. What about if they just come swarming out, fucking hundreds of them? Yeah, if they do, that'll be a sight to see, mate. And also, run. My bum was going like this. What have you got on there, mate? This is me, multi purpose, box of shots. Using this to stop the bees attacking my face. The smoke from a small fire should make the bees drowsy and less likely to attack. There we go. By opening up the small hole in the trunk, the smoke should repel the bees and let the men explore the hive. This is it, lads. It's starting to come out. Yeah. 
What the fuck is that? That's fucking... Oh, my God! Taste it! Taste that shit! I do the whole thing. Oh, my God. That is, oh that is the sweetest thing. That's honeycomb, motherfucker! That's honeycomb! Oh, my God. Leave this, mate. Look! Mate, that is the best honey I've ever tasted in my life. Mate, give me a shrimp. Mate, it's so sweet. Take, 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 take. Oh, oh my God. Get it, contain it, contain it, guys. That's honey. Ryan, you fucking genius. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is, this is. That's the sweetest thing you've ever tasted. I was like, no, it can't be, it can't be. And I was like, it is. I think as a society, our palates have become so conditioned just to sugar, salt, and fat. And for these guys, stripped of that, it's almost like instant detox. Look at us now, sweating like bitters, but we've got energy to get that honey! You won't be able to know what it's like unless you've been 23 days with barely any food. You won't be able to experience, but when you taste something sweet, it's almost like you can feel the sugar going from your tongue into your stomach and just straight into your brain, almost like doing a line of whiz or something. And it tastes unbelievable. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Seriously. That's the toughy stuff, that. That's the toughy. How are you feeling? <laughs> I think we should walk back and then Ryan should drop a bombshell. We got fucking honey. Right, how are you going to put this out? Woo! You get my penis there? No. Hi, guys, what you got? Ryan, what have we got? We've got us a sexy-ass little treat for tonight. Some honey! Nice! Honey! Oh, really? Honey. We oh, took it God. down. No. Yeah. And it's fucking nice. It's the nicest honey in the world. That is awesome. Who found that? Ryan. No way. How did you get it out? Did you light a fire? We had embers in the team. Oh, brilliant. That's awesome. Yeah. Genius. Oh. Clever boys. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh, well what a fantastic end to an incredible day. Well, it's going to be a, a fucking good meal tonight, it is. Three courses, if we, if we please. I hope that this, this pushes towards a bit of a resolution. I mean, I've got my, um, my reservations about Rupert, but I would rather we all were just getting along, and I hope that maybe he has a little bit more respect for Brian, really, for getting out there and doing that. Don't worry. Hi, mate. Well done, mate. Well done, really, really, really well done, mate. Thanks, Fletch. Yeah, we got a load of oysters, limpets, and yeah, some well more done. coconuts. Um, Brian. Yeah, well, there's been lots of different Ryans on this trip, hasn't there? He's actually grafting really hard the last few days, which he wasn't at the beginning. Um, I think he's starting to realise what hard work means. I mean, we're never going to be bosom buddies or anything like that, but it's hard not to like him. For dinner, the men have come together to feast on oysters with honey. I mean, I think the whole sacky thing, and I have the utmost amount of respect for the job he's done. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, what's my problem with leadership? Um, I've always had a problem with People telling me what to do, I guess, is one of them. Um, I don't like it. I'm not very good at it. Oh, wow. I rebelled a lot my teenage years. I couldn't deal with authority. And even to this day, I'm still not very good when people tell me what to do. But I don't know whether that's a bad quality. I don't feel it always is. I think sometimes it's good, but it's not always an admirable one. So maybe that's something I need to learn from this experience. After dinner, Ryan reflects on his reaction over the stingray killing. I regret having a vicious tongue in my life. People said it to me today, it's not going to get me anywhere. But I'm, a, I'm a tosser, basically. You are a dick when you, when you go off on one. <laughs> <laughs> we all have our moments, Fletch, I'm sure. We certainly do, mate. Yeah. We certainly do. 
I mean, that's one thing you can be rest assured of, Brian. Everyone else here can be a complete dickhead as well at times, though. Especially me. So you're not alone. Oh, well, I think it'd be nice if we can all get through the last days with smiles on our faces and enjoy it. Going to really, really miss this place. Excuse me. Excuse me. Thank God that started working again. <laughs> Hey, morning. There's a real newfound energy amongst everyone here at the camp. A great sense of optimism, a great sense of purpose. Everyone seems to be pulling in the right direction. I am amazed. I haven't seen so much energy around this camp for about a week. I couldn't have asked for a better morning. I think Saki's done a fantastic job and uh, everyone is behind him. So we're just going round to see um, CB. He's building the raft so we can get some crab pots out. We were dropped here with three knives, three machetes. That was it. And we've sourced food. We've sourced water. We've sourced our own home. We've made beds, tables. And we are bloody amazing. Through adversity, come out the other side, united together, and gone. You asked us to survive and thrive. We've done more than that. We have absolutely nailed this. It's a men's last night on the island after an entire month away from civilization. Tomorrow, they'll be going home. All right, boys. Fire's ready. Food needs cooking. Let the party begin! Yeah! So this is it. This was like the pipe dream. It's just amazing, fantastic. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else than I am now. I really wouldn't in the world. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Cheers, guys. For the best time of my life, anyway, lads. Oh, Thank you. Oh, good on you, Jeff. You get out more, son. How far we've come from half an oyster and six snails each, eh? Wow. Just in the ways of the ancient peoples. Uh, we thought it would be very nice tonight uh, to offer something back to the ocean uh, with a huge display of gratitude and thanks. All right, guys, we're going to launch our raft of gratitude to the ocean. There we go. Fantastic job. Just settling on the whole experience and coming to the end and really excited about leaving but going to really, really miss this place. Last day on shore the island and I've been hit with an extreme sense of depression. And it's mad because I'll be fucked if I can't wait to speak to my girlfriend. But it's hit me that we are leaving and it's making me sad. I've got to turn my emails back on tomorrow and I don't want to do that. And there's a big alarm bell going like that, big flashy light. Then why don't you want to do that? What is wrong? What is wrong with life back home that makes you fear that side of it so much? And that kind of what this island helps you understand. But on the same time, okay. it helps you appreciate what you've got. The best thing I'm looking forward to is, um, is see, seeing my mum and dad. That's it. I'm sure we'll all agree this has been an amazing fucking journey.
Um, 28 days, and not one of us left. We all came here at the same time. We all went through the same things. We argued, we fell in love, we fought, we made up. And on that note, I have a little poem that I was using pretty much as a prayer for all the times I got really hard, when it was really hard to pull through. And it goes uh, a little something like this. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not cried nor winced aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade. Yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me, us, unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. I've said to them over and over again a few days before they started on the island. Just remember, the pain won't last ever. But the end goal has now arrived, and um, we're going to take them out. Well, I can see their fire. There he is, boys. Oh, my God. Come on. Look at you guys. <laughs> Hairier, oh, yeah. skinnier, yeah. but hopefully smarter. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, Thank you. Before the men leave, there's just one thing left for them to do. Yeah. After three, let's say goodbye to Camp Barsi. One, two, two three. three. Yeah. Watch the steam, watch the steam. I think we live in such a fast and materialistic culture, and I think what these guys have proved, actually, when you're stripped of all of that, they're made of something decent. And they've only proved that one way, and that's through hardship. It's going to be a wonderful thing now to leave with them and then reintroduce them to life, and let's hope they, they focus on the good side of things and leave behind the bad stuff. Some people may think, well done, Tony, or they may think, Silly old bugger. See you later, surely. Oh, surely. We're all different. 20s, 30s, 40s and 50s, but there's still life at 70. The greatest thing about this experience, I think, was this amazing opportunity to really think in depth about who you are, your life. So I'm kind of looking at a new future, and so it's been great having that time to really think about where I'm going, what I'm going to do. I've always seen myself as lazy. Here, you can't really be lazy. Mine now is focused and sharp. I've got a sense of ambition that I've never felt before, which is going to change my life, a happier one for me. I really think that I have undergone quite a big change in my head. I think having had everything just taken away and stripped to the absolute bare bones of, of nothing, I feel like I'm going to appreciate just just everything so much more, I really do. I've still got a bucket list at my age, and, and I realise, really, that I've got to bloody get on with it and not spend the next 10 years just keeping up with emails. I came on a boy almost, didn't know where I wanted to go in life, just plotting along, just thinking, yeah, I got a job, whatever. And now I feel as if I'm leaving like a man. It doesn't matter what sort of person you are, what sort of man you are, you can do anything and achieve anything you want to. Fucking hell. We did it. We came, we saw, we conquered. We did it.
make no illusion, folks. This isn't a set put up by Channel 4. This is bloody real. Four weeks ago, I set out to prove 13 men could survive being abandoned ah. on a remote Pacific island. The pelicans seem to be eating more than I do. This, for me, is a simple experiment to study what makes a man a man. Left alone on the island... Okay. And uh, there you are. They filmed everything themselves. I wanted this to be totally new, totally original, and never done before. 28 days after dropping them off, I returned to the island to find out how my groundbreaking experiment actually worked. That's, uh, That's all we've been drinking. It tastes like you've all been washing your socks. <laughs> and see for myself some of the techniques the men used to survive. When you're pushed to extremes, you realise you can go a lot further than you thought. The men reveal how the experiment affected them. The more things I get rid of in my life, the bigger the smile goes. I think it's powerful to see a group where people are so different, but they're actually bound together by shared experience. And you'll see what happened when they got back to civilization. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so happy. I just want to see you. Oh, I missed you. By Christ, I have. <laughs> chose to base my experiment on a remote desert island in the Pacific Ocean, more than 5,000 miles from Britain. I think there's something appealing about doing this on an island for a couple of reasons. First of all, is there's nowhere to run. You're stuck on this limited space, and that forces issues. The other reason is that I think people often think of desert islands as nice places. The reality is they're deserted for a reason. There's very little running water, and these things are covered in, in snakes, in tarantulas, and scorpions, you've got crocodiles, uh, you've got sharks, and it, it forces issues because it's an unforgiving, unrelenting environment. But despite the dangers, the men survived. Well, I can see their fire. There he is, boys. Come on. Come on. One month after dropping them off, I went back to see for myself what the men had achieved. Wow, well, look at you guys. <laughs> Hairier. Oh, yeah. yeah. Little Skinnier. Bit. <laughs> yeah. But hopefully smarter. Wow, well, congratulations. Yeah. No, mate, thank you. Congratulations. You. Will you show me your camp? Come in. Good. Come in. So this is what we call home. And do you often have Tony? That is Tony's spot. <laughs> Good to see you, Bear. Congratulations. Well done, you. Thank you very well much. Well done, you. I love it. I love your throne. So I clocked them all in, I clocked them all out. Safety, security, and I'd like to be the last on the boat to make sure they're all on. <laughs> Shoe stores, obviously. A uh, table kindly made for us by Joe. Hanging machetes, torches, buckets, coconuts. It's good. I mean, this is a real semblance of community. I love that. Look at that. Yeah. You've got a front door. Camp Bassey. Yeah. <laughs> Shirley Island, Camp Bassey. <laughs> so why, why Shirley Island? Uh, because every time we went out looking for food, it was like, surely we're going to find something today. Surely we're going to find something tomorrow. And surely enough, we did. Shirley Island. Genius. In any survival situation, one of the first things you have to do is find shelter. In my opinion, the spot the men chose to set up their camp was pretty good. It was close to the sea, which is a great source of food, and not too far from their water source. But for me, if they'd moved just 10 metres further into the trees, they'd have had better protection from the elements. Custom-made windbreak. <laughs> and when was the wind bad? At night? Night time. It got quite cold, so we built the windbreak to try and ease our suffering. Dean and Ryan, show us where we used to sleep. So some people sleep around here, and then others, like me, Saki, sleep here, 
I get attacked by crabs and frogs every night, which wasn't fun, but it's, it, it's home. If you choose the right place to sleep, you can avoid a whole host of issues. Oh, shit, look at your face. Is it bad? Oh, yeah, it looks pretty bad. From the very beginning of their time on the island, the men were ravaged by insects at night. Anything that's bit me is an arsehole. <laughs> and if you're covered in itchy, painful bites, you're not going to get the rest that you need. What about eight days? Working out what you can do to get a decent night's sleep isn't just a luxury, it's actually about survival. The little things in survival become the big things, and a good night's sleep is right at the top of that list. Wow, look at that, it really goes on. After a few miserable nights, some of the guys realised their mistake. This is the executive lounge. And four of them did move further into the jungle. It's Matt and I were the first to kind of build a couple of these A-frame beds. This is my one here. Um, they're really comfy. Yeah, they're great. They're Try it out if you want. It's, uh, it takes go. me, so it should manage you. Oh, wow, yeah. I would have thought that's an awful lot comfier than lying on the oh, ground, God, yeah. you know? been home for 28 nights and actually gets pretty comfy and you can look at the stars and the canopy. The A-frame beds some of the men built yep. were the perfect way to raise them off the cold, damp floor and out of reach of the critters. Dean's finally found a use for his hairdressing skills. He's <laughs> weaving all the leaves that are sticking through underneath back in beautifully. That is an ant's nest. I've made my bed with an ant's nest. <laughs> Foolish, wasn't it? The men made mattresses using vines, which they covered with woven palm leaves. We're on our way to greater things. That's a shitload better than sleeping on the floor, isn't it? This became known as my fortress of solitude. Oh, my goodness, um, wow. Uh, it's not very dignified. So you really well cocooned in there? I'm pretty well waterproof if the weather had changed. Yeah. Yeah. Warm, dry, off the ground from all the creepy crawlies. Yep. And very happy. Smart thing to have done. I think it's, it's amazing to see how it's evolved and changed. And initially, their camp looked a bit like a hobo encampment. Uh, but as the weeks have gone on, they realised that you really need a sanctuary. You need somewhere you can hide away and, and it makes you feel good. And as a reminder of what you love about home, I love the table. Test it so, out. Yeah, I love to test it out. Uh, it's been used pretty much every, every, every so minute. So would you it's... eat meals around here? Yeah. You'd yeah, actually do. do that? Yep. I mean, if you think of how many British families have stopped sitting around a table and eating together. And there's something incredibly powerful about actually sitting down and looking each other in the eye yeah. and sharing a meal together. So I love the fact that you made table a priority. Looking around the camp, it was obvious how resourceful the men had been with materials they scavenged from around the island. Grab a seat, Bear. Grab a seat. I mean, this is great, isn't it? One thing that staggers me with these desert islands, however remote they are, is just the amount of trash you get washed up on the beaches. <laughs> Guys, that looks like the beginning of a toilet. You would need an enormous arse to... <laughs> to justify a hole like that. It certainly would. Craig, I'm going to be honest with you, mate. This is my ultimate nightmare. It's the closest I've got to a stress ball, to be honest with you. What I've got here is uh, crab pot nut 2.0. This is a sack he's find. Why is it? An open beer. You're joking. Yeah. No, no I shit you not. There's so much stuff on the shores of this island of kind of crap and rubbish that normally you kind of look at and touch and go, oh, what a shame, it's ruining paradise. but. Now we look at every single piece of plastic and metal and string and turn it as kind of treasure. When was the last time you felt salon fresh? What? No way. Shut the fuck up. That is shampoo. <laughs> Dean, promise you share it with me. That is shampoo. Right, you get to let you know. Advance warning. I've just given Tony a plastic truncheon, so look out. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> to keep the boys on the toes, I've got an enforcer. It's always embarrassing to be a human. The shit that we are jettisoning into the sea that is being washed up on shore is phenomenal. Taff manages to find a place. Let's have a look at them bad boys. One black one, one blue one. They're not the same colour, but they're the same make. 
Better <laughs> say, <laughs> Mike. What more can you ask for on the today, Len? Mate, they're not as good as mine. Look at them. That, they don't fit well, but fuck it, it's going to be doing me well on a Sunday night. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to say, Mark, the pair of high heel shoes made for you to get lucky. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> After last night, Fletch. <laughs> <laughs> right, should we do this fishing line then? Yeah, let's go get some let's fish. Let's crack on. on. Four weeks after abandoning 13 British men on a remote desert island. Yeah. I mean, that's almost like a honeymoon suite of a view. I went back to see for myself how they managed to survive. Welcome to oh, Camp yeah. Bassi, sir. <laughs> wow, do you mind if I have some of this? On a tropical desert island like this, dehydration is your biggest enemy. God, that's good. Without fluids, you're not going to last for more than three days. Yeah. That's what we've been drinking. Good, healthy stuff. Go, Filtered, boiled, Knock ready to out. drink. I mean, truly <laughs> horrible, isn't it? <laughs> it tastes like you've all been washing your socks in it. If the filter actually does... It is actually my socks. Mm, right. So you are drinking my right. sweat particles. Well, Enjoy that. <laughs> the only water source the men could find after a desperate search of the island was a stagnant pool. I never realised that I'd have to drink puddle water. When it came to collecting and transporting it, the debris from the beach came into its own. Calling it water is now a bit of a stretch of the imagination, to be honest. Sorry. And one of the problems of drinking from stagnant water is that the animals also drink from it. They do more than that, though. They also shit in it, and it's that that will make people sick. To make the water safe, the men improvised an ingenious filter system using materials they scavenged and repurposed. Stuff with, like Fletch said, his socks, charcoal, a little a grid to stop anything getting through, although towards the end we did have a very protein-filled water supply. Uh, insects yeah. and bugs and larvae and all of that. Yeah. This was smart survival. Filtering the water before boiling removes any big particles that could contain life-threatening bugs. Looks like piss. Tastes a lot worse. Having established a water supply, the men's next priority was food. Is this where you keep your nets? Yeah, these are them here, so they're floating there. We're at low tide, so it should, it should be pretty quick. Finding these nets, repairing them and getting them into the sea was a lifeline for the men. When it comes to desert island survival, I always say to people, fish first. The sea as a larder is well stocked. All of the seas around here are literally teeming with life. There's something like 500 different edible species of fish, but it's also booby-trapped. Every time the men swam out to check their nets, they had to run the gauntlet with jellyfish, venomous stingrays and a whole host of other nasties. The waters were infested with sharks. We were seeing these great big fish, you know, with half of them eaten by the sharks, and we just didn't think anything of it. We just went out and swam with them. You never know what you're going to get. Wow. Look at that. Yeah, good luck getting out now. Even on my brief visit to the island, the men hauled in a potentially lethal catch. Stonefish are actually one of the most deadly fish in the sea. Well camouflaged, easy to stand on if you're not aware. Even if it doesn't kill you, people have been known to literally beg to have their feet amputated. The pain has been so intense. The island looked beautiful, but every time you went anywhere, it tried to kill you. And you're suddenly thinking, Jesus, this ain't a postcard. It's horrible. Before taking the guys into this extreme environment to start the experiment... If I leave him be, he will just quietly crawl around me. I gave them just one day's basic survival training. If they're big enough and you're small enough and one of these gets hold of you, going to squeeze you. God, I can feel that already on my hand. Crush every bone in your body. So the truth is, none of these guys are experts. None of them are survival kind of gurus. You know, they're regular people, and that's what we wanted. We didn't want the experts. We wanted normal people who have got to kind of improvise and think smart and be resourceful. Do you actually ever wipe your bum with leaves? I love wiping my bum with leaves. <laughs> Personally, if it was me, I'd get up in the morning, raise my arms aloft, wander into the sea, do my business, wipe my backside, salute as it floats out into the Grand Pacific. <laughs> you know, clean, done, hygienic. You wash your hands and you haven't got crap all over the island. 
So a bear doesn't shit in the woods, then? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I knew the biggest challenge for these guys was going to be finding enough food to keep them going. OK, scorpion. You'll find these under wood piles. You're out collecting firewood. Lift one up and bam. And it's not always obvious where those calories are going to come from. He'll strike you with his tail. See him doing it there? And he comes round, he bites you. Be a man, pin him down, take his stinger off. Good thing about these, though, they're good protein and you can eat them. Tastes like shit. <laughs> You're better off skewing them and roast them over the fire. But raw, they're horrible. Oh, hoo -hoo. Scorpion. There he is. There, 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 there he is. Up. Got him, got him. I've got him. He's aggressive. He's aggressive. From experience, I know it's amazing what you'll eat when you're pushed to the oh, edge. God, I can see its guts inside. That's not going to be tasty, guys. Oh, man, you're making us wait. Come on. We want to see you eat it. I hear that in, a, in the future, when things get a bit more dystopian, we're going to have to eat insects rather than <laughs> mammals. So I'm looking forward to it. Arr, yes. Arr. That's man food. Oh, man. man food. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. How, how does that taste? Oh, yeah. it's food. <laughs> oh. One of the key skills in the wild is knowing what you can eat and what you can't eat. And if there's doubt, don't take the risk. You'll only get it wrong once. More dangerous than any snake, scorpion or crocodile is this fella. Innocent looking little apple, actually called the death apple. And this is enough to kill not one man, but 20. And when you're surviving on an island, you're hungry, you see what you think is edible fruit, so tempting to pick it up, eat it. End game. Deaf apple, bloody deaf apple. That thing, I was paranoid about deaf apple. But is that a deaf apple? Yeah. Yeah. Where's the fact it come? Where's that come from? It's been washing up. Yeah. Washed it's up? Right here. It might be down there or up there. When you're walking on the beach, they wash up from elsewhere. If you step on that deaf apple, you're getting scabbed, you could die. And trust me, that deaf apple looked lovely. So we could have ate that and we would have died. From start to finish, the men were always teetering on the brink of starvation. And there goes my fucking bait. Just this bay is empty of life. Oh, yeah. Come on, Mother Nature, give us some food. But what's important is that they never gave up. So where are we going, Sam? We're going foraging. And that is the key to survival. Look the pigs. Ah, balls. Oh, fuck. We all tried so many different things, and they just didn't work. We didn't realize how far mankind has come through trial and error. OK, here we go. He's coming shallow. Failure plus failure. <laughs> Plus determination equals success. Yes! 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 Fuck it out! Yes! Hey, look at that, Piggy. Oh, mate! We've caught 28 fish yeah. today. Anyone for carbohydrate? Wow! Oh, oh my God! Driven by all-consuming hunger, <laughs> they went to extraordinary lengths to discover what the island had to offer. It's a fucking caiman! <laughs> Fucking Cayman! Wow. I've never ate an orange before. Fuck off. We'll start now. Try that. Come on, here's your first one. Wow, you've got a massive hit of citrus all the way over here. It's nice, isn't it? So good. Welcome to the world of fruit, Dean. There was, however, one craving they couldn't easily satisfy, despite a tantalising reminder. Dean, what have, you, what have you found on the beach, mate? We found a, a sweet wrapper. It's intense for these guys, the lust just to get something sweet in their mouth. And the boys have found some of these and they had like a tiny little bit of sugar in them. But if you put a bit of boiling water in them... Are you good? Oh, oh, oh it's good! It's good! It's good. Oh. I don't care if he gives me the shit. <laughs> it's worth it. Over four weeks, these 13 men had come a long way since their first unappetising meal of snails. Oh, Mr Fletcher, an artist, sir. Uh, tasted excellent. some coconut there, isn't it? Toasted coconut here, mate. Before departing, they invited me to sample some of their favourite hard-earned island delicacies. 
unbelievable, guys. We have dressed crab, honey. Oh, you do not know how honoured you are to have that honey. On to wow. your oysters there, which are just marinating at the moment in a, in a lime jus. We have fresh snapper there. We have gazuma berries and almonds in there, toasted coconut and a fig and lime marinade to go with your fish. Yep. Well, guys, I would like to, um, I'd like to say grace before yeah. eating. Yeah. Anyways, Lord, um, thank you for these men, the courage and the fortitude they've shown. Thank you for the hands that prepared this food and thank you for the sea that's provided it. Amen. 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 And let's try a bit of this. So a little bit of honey on honey onto the oysters. A little I'd bit say. of honey on the oyster. That stuff is insane. I'm gonna tell you now. You look at the food that they serve for me, and there was a real sense of genuine pride in that. That it was um, it was really special. To go from you know scavenge, scavenging around in the first few days to providing something that you know I'm not saying it would it would be served at a Michelin star restaurant, but it was pretty good given the tools that we had. It showed our evolution and how much we'd got our stuff together. Oh, it's incredible. <laughs> it's off the scale. On that platter, that was like the culmination of our surviving there. It was a real sense of achievement. A toast to you guys. To an experience I, I, I really pray you'll never forget. Uh, to an experience that I hope will empower you in your everyday lives. And to friendships that I hope will last uh, all your days as well. Yeah. Four weeks ago, I abandoned 13 British men on a remote desert island. They would have to fend for themselves in isolation. For me, it was really important that we didn't have camera crew coming in every day and filming it all, and it kind of just would have felt set up. I wanted this to be totally new, totally original, and never done before. For this reason, the radical decision was made to get the 13 men to film the entire experience for themselves. Come on, everybody. Take a walk with Uncle Saki today. The only filming is these guys going like that, and going like that. Right, guys, I'm gonna have to put you down. I think I found us a bird. Yes, I have. Hang, hang on, hang on. And effectively, that means the only people telling their story is themselves. Woohoo! Shazam! We're all photographers now. We've all got iPhones or smartphones yeah. or whatever. And you can shoot movies on these things. Yeah. You can take pictures. And and we just do it as a natural part of our yep. life, so why not incorporate it into television? Yep. I'd like to show you around my favourite spot. This is where I come and sit when I feel a little bit shit. I tried to do this trip on a budget. I won this hat in Bulgaria about five years ago. Here's the sea. And these are my rocks. These are my rocks. Wang Rock. Way I'm out there. I bought my boots cheap, cheapest boots I could find. Look at this, day 13. What the fuck am I going to do? Look at the view. Look at all this. This is the jungle that on which I have become a man. The group included a sound man and three trained and experienced cameramen who lived under exactly the same conditions as everybody else. It's a bit like... Myself, Matt and Rupert and Kiff were uh, on a plane and it's crashed on a desert island, which just happens we had our gear with us. With danger never far away, the men needed to be able to deal with emergencies themselves. The hospital where people went for treatment. Okay, so were you in charge? You were the assigned medic. Uh, yeah, between myself and Sam, um, we dealt with a few injuries. The men were provided with basic medical supplies. Craig was a trained first aider. I think I've done more first aid on the island than I do when I'm back home. <laughs> and Sam, a qualified doctor. You say, ah? Ah! He slipped as a it. I think it broke my hand. Without them, some men may have been forced to leave the island. I'll be honest, I punched the sand. Oh, no. <laughs> I enjoyed being the doctor on the island. It gave me a bit of, bit of a sense of purpose. 
So I've made this bamboo into a hopefully roughly the shape of a splint. I was called upon to do things I wouldn't normally do in my day to day life as a neurologist. I can still do some things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But the truth is that ultimately survival is about so much more than just physical preservation. As human beings, we're pretty complex creatures. You know, we need much more than just food and water. Uh, I think that's our base level, but above that, then we crave things like friendship and connection and community. The single hardest thing about that 28 days on that island, the lack of contact with your loved ones from the outside world. I'm 6,000 miles away from you, home, <laughs> And I'm missing here. The men had to get by with just one photo from home. My two grandkids, you're still with me, Toby and Annabelle. You'll be with me all the time. My beautiful girlfriend. And uh, a huge part of me wants to go home. I think the hardest thing was definitely missing my, my girlfriend and our little girl that we have together. It was heart-wrenching at times. It's just, it's just a whole no contact whatsoever. Every now and then, yeah. you keep, I keep thinking, I'll just snip off and use the phone and call home. Very, very suffocating feeling. It was important that the group reached out to each other to keep isolation at bay. What glues people together? Humour, kindness, and that shared adversity you're going through together. Yeah, I do. Oh, just there. Uh, I'm having a bit of motion weight, Billy. Yeah? Yeah. You know what you need, don't you? Big Fletch hug. <laughs> yeah. You've got a temporary family at the moment, mate. Yeah, I know. Yeah? I know. I know. You've never met these people before in your life, but yet you become instantly close, just like that. As soon as you're chucked on the island, you're, you're best friends, because you've got no choice. I just feel like I've been so up and down. <sighs> you know what you need then, don't you? As well as a Fletch hug. What's that? You man the fuck up, don't you? No, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> Babe, I'm gay, I'm allowed to cry. <laughs> hey. But there were inevitable tensions and moments when it looked like the group might fall apart. Mate, come on, why are you here? Why are you here? I don't know why I asked my question that. I know. It says that. I've read a lot of it, so... I know. It's chucked off. The wild exposes people wide open, and um, sometimes there's a lot of fallout and mess first. So all you want to do is bitch, and that's all... I'm not bitching. Hey, grow up. Don't walk away. When people are under pressure and your life is on the line, you've got to do all you can to keep a group cohesive and together, because when it's together, it's strong. It's not strong when it's fragmented and broken. So what's going through your mind? Great. Oh, I'm off. I'm off. I've had enough. Don't quit, mate. You'll regret it for the rest of your life if you do. Just keep plodding. Just digging deep. Yeah? You need to find, you need to find that fire in your belly, mate. In the end, all 13 men managed to stick it out together. Let the party begin! And on their last night, were able to celebrate their differences. The award for... the best... Tantrum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one's close. This one's close one. Oh, it's tight. It's tight. It's a tight one. Is Craig. <laughs> so the category for the most improved person, and this goes to Ryan. Yay! Five, five, Ryan. <laughs> I'm going to take this award and apply it for the rest of my life. Well done, man. Well done, man. Well done, man. Well done, man. I think it's powerful to see a group where people are so different, but they're actually bound together by shared experience. I think what you guys have been through is essentially an accelerated crash course in life. <laughs> and I'd love to find out what each of you is going to take away from the island, but also what you're going to leave on the island. You realise how little you can survive on here and how little you actually need, and it's, it's great to, I think, hopefully I'm going to be able to go home and just, like, pull that back and just be slightly less kind of wasteful with everything I do. I'm going to leave behind, hopefully forever, that sense of taking things for granted in the world that we live in. I don't feel as I had a massive ego before, but if I did have any, I think I'll leave a bit more of it here. 
I kind of started this whole experiment really to try and find out what everyday modern British blokes are actually like under pressure. And the reality is the experience has been bloody hard. I have huge respect for anyone who can come out of it the other end together as friends and with a smile on their face. <laughs> Mate, amazing! I just want to eat some food! And after any mission, there's nothing quite like the rewards. I've been thinking about that bar for days now, mate, and that is what I am going to do now. When we first got back to civilization, we were given rules about what we should and shouldn't eat. So we were told to stay away from carbs, beer, and all these things. And the first thing we managed to get our hands on... One, two, two three! <laughs> Beer. <laughs> 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 drink. Holy oh God. God. Oh, oh, man, do I like beer now. Oh it was quite an achievement. I think we were all proud to have done it. And that cold beer. Hug it out, hug it out. That was. That showed we had somehow. After weeks of being cut off from home, first contact can be overwhelming. Hello. Hiya, Mum. Hello. Hiya, Joe. It's hard to explain what we've just done in a phone call. Well, where do you begin? We just got off, Mum. We've just, uh, we've just landed. Baby? Hello. Are you there? <laughs> Four weeks' worth of no contact, four weeks' worth of missing, all just came out. Dad. Hi, How you done it? I'm back. <laughs> finished. I'm back uh, from the island, love. I just want to speak to you. I lost two stone. Two stone? Yeah. I just want to see you. Yeah. Feeling these things makes you feel really fucking alive. There's no doubt, I think, when you go through hard times, there's pain first. But this is about what people find at the end of it. Yes! Energy is coming back! Returning from the wild always helps you see modern life through fresh eyes. That's the women's correct. What do the symbols mean? Ah, <laughs> <sighs> freedom. It's fucking incredible. Simplest things like taking a loo in a toilet, as opposed to running to find a tree that's far enough away from camp. Oh, my God. Problem solved. Oh, I can just feel the cool air. This doesn't feel right. Oh, wow. There's nothing left of me. God, that's very weird. <laughs> Nobody had to fetch it. I'll filter it. I'll boil it. Oh, man. Oh. You, you do take it for granted. I'm not going to take it for granted anymore. And the magic is you can't buy those things. It comes at a cost, and the cost is that thousand barrels of sweat and toil. And I've been there many times. The hardship is always worth it. And no food ever tastes as good as that first meal. Oh, my God! Chicken! This is sugar. This is, this is sugar. <laughs> Your senses are almost like, they, they, they almost shut down. They're not being exercised. So the second that you have something which you haven't had for a month, you times its flavour by a thousand. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. More sugar. More sugar. <laughs> More sugar. <laughs> it tastes so fucking good. The best food. I take immense pleasure when someone says that the hungry are the starving now in normal life, saying that you don't even know what hunger is, because it is very different 
to your standard space between dinner and tea. Three, two, one. And the tomato sauce absolutely blew your mind. It was that strong. Oh, it's just like a pure explosion of flavours in your mouth. It, it tastes what magical. To food. Our old friend, she's back again. For 13 men, a life-changing experience. And one which they deserve to remember with an enduring sense of pride. Whoever you are, whatever shape you are, whatever upbringing you have, actually, when squeezed, these guys have proved modern British man has actually got what it takes. <laughs>